welcome along and welcome back to Silver Run Forest. Today we have a couple of errands to run first, so we're heading back into town. Uh, we've got two pallets of floor tiles that we want to deliver down to the shipyard. Um, together with that, we also need to get a pallet full of the... Wow, am I stuck on that? I think I'm stuck on the edge here. Let's try this. There we go. Um, we've got a, a pallet full of beams we also need to get down to the roller coaster. So we're going to start off by doing this. Let's unfold our trailer. Get this off. In fact, uh, uh, yeah, let's get this off. Because we're not going to put this pallet on the trailer. We're going to put this pallet in the flatbed or in the bed of our truck. So uh, we need to take this and uh, and then drop the trailer off so that we can do that. It's a little bit convoluted, um, but we need to take the JCB all over the place. I could have done it with, the, uh, with our little Unimog, but uh, I had somebody ask, why don't I use my uh, truck? Why don't I drop the, uh, the truck bed off this, actually? and uh, and use the truck and yeah mainly because i have the unimog but we also need to really use our truck from time to time so we're going to do that now and uh, i'm going to get these onto here uh, i can't really get things like the long beams on but this will take pallets this truck bed which is quite useful and because this is a tele truck uh, we're able to push this onto the flatbed quite easily, like or onto the truck bed quite easily, like so. Now, I would like to sell the other pallet of these, or possibly use them on the roller coaster or something like that. So we're going to avoid doing that for now. Let's strap that down, like that. Close up our truck bed. And then we can bring this round here, connect back up to the trailer. And then we will be able to get our little uh, pallet truck back on here. So up with that. And we're doing a lot of backwards and forwards with this at the moment. Because we've got to get the tele truck down to um, the... Oh, we've got to get, yeah, this up to the sawmill next. Uh, so that we can get the beams on here. Now, my main reason for needing to do this, apart from wanting to get these items moving onwards, is we have 73,520 in the bank. And uh, ideally, I want to uh, place a house and place our sheep pen today so that we can get things uh, starting running from that point of view uh, several people have pointed out that before we can go creating any fabric we are going to have to put down a spinnery so the next thing after this after we get the sheep started and get them producing wool is going to be looking to placing a spinnery down and finding somewhere for that i think we only need two thousand meters of this uh, but we'll give it a try in fact i'm, go I'm gonna put all three of these on because we can deliver all three of these to the roller coaster i I'm, I'm willing to bet the roller coaster needs more than three of these and the advantage of uh delivering these to the roller coaster is going to be uh, that we can make a, uh, a load of money dropping them off. And as I said, we need to make a little bit of money today in order to both place our house, uh, which I've now worked out where I want to place that, and place the sheep pen, which I figured out too. Uh, we also need to put in a roadway through to our forest area so that we can start cutting trees down soon when we need to. And, uh, yeah, just sort of generally getting our yard ready for the next stage uh, is what we have to do. There we are. So we're going to leave this here. And I think we're going to be on the lookout for uh, any new uh, front loaders or, or uh, things like our teleskit here. Not front loaders, but, uh, well, front loader would do it, but I'd rather have a wheel loader 
or a skid steer and having one that we can leave up here so we can easily load stuff up so our first destination is going to be the roller coaster and the roller coaster is nearly coming along now we are almost on to the next stage uh if we have a look here what we need so we have no more wooden beams in here but it requires zero liters to get to the next step which is mad um planks long it requires 745 liters and we've got uh, sorry requires 728 liters and has 744 so they've got plenty of those we are just going to reverse the wooden beams that we've got here and deliver them here because we need the money from these and uh yeah i don't think yeah this doesn't need um any other planks in here or any of these so there we go so that should now almost immediately yeah there we go has cleaned out the uh wooden beams and has taken us up by 8764 uh to 83309 that is more than enough for us to do the job we need to do today and so we are heading around here to the shipyard we're going to drop off this other or this uh pallet here of these and if we have a look here uh we need wooden beams 4065 we've got 4300 and floor tiles we need uh 1745 and we are just short we've got 1545 so this single pallet of floor tiles should get the boat onto the next stage, uh, which is fantastic because look at this. It's coming along very nicely, but we're going to get to the point very, very soon where we're going to need some fabric. So, uh, yeah, we need to get on to that next stage and get working on that. Before we do that, though, we want to get back down to here and get uh, the rest of our yard set up. So not a huge amount left to set up here. Uh, we need somewhere to sleep, so we're going to build ourselves a log cabin. And we need somewhere for our sheep. So I want to have a house that nicely overlooks the river here i think that would be absolutely wonderful and this is a, a really good spot for it so let's back out of here come into the shop and the construction uh farmhouses and i'm going to go for the fifty-five thousand one. one uh that is uh that is going to be our best bet for now nice little house that we should be able to place on here quite nicely so uh yeah, I want to get it at the right angle. Uh, that should do it, I think. Yeah, there, like so. Perfect. Very happy with that. Uh, that comes onto there really nicely. I think we might smooth things out at the back here a little bit. But uh, in general, that's really cool. Uh, let's see if we can't uh, smooth the land out around it a little bit. So back into the shop into construction and landscaping and we'll just smooth things out a little bit maybe yeah just a little bit like that and i think try and level things across here like that but let's go a little bit further back and just bring the top up like this no okay bring it across the front like that there we are and then just smooth it along that like that a lot and then on the other side i want to get rid of this uh, fairly high ridge or level everything out around the back here doesn't matter if this is a little bit off the ground uh that works fine for me but just smooth it around the back there a little bit and there we go so uh, not bad at the front and quite happy with that at the back and look at the view that we have from our house really really picturesque i love that that's absolutely wonderful uh inside i don't know if we can actually go inside this we can see inside but i don't know if we can actually go inside no 
So we can't go inside. We do have an upstairs sleeping area in there, though. And, yeah, we can sleep at the doorway. Perfect. I thought there was some way of going inside so that I could uh, do a change of clothes. But uh, I can't see how to do that at the moment. Let's have a look. Uh, no, there is only the sleep. So, yeah, you can't, you can't go inside. But that is the perfect little house for us. Then the other thing we need is a animal area so we're gonna go with sheep for 26,000 um and we want to get them somewhere around here i think actually here seems to be a good place if i can stop it overlapping with another object um although yeah there we go so about there-ish seems good uh nicely in the middle of all of our stuff 26,000 we have plenty and bang there we go so yeah this is going to be our sheep area um which should serve us very well for uh for just having a few sheep in here that we can keep uh for 2,400 we only need didn't we only need hay or grass for them which is great uh for Oh, wow, we could buy a whole load of eight-month-old sheep. We need really good wool-producing sheep, preferably. I don't think there's much difference. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll come back to that in a bit because we have 2,400 left. We'd only be able to get five sheep at the moment. You know what? I think that's actually enough. Yeah, let's go for... I'm going to have some black Welsh mountain. So let's have four of those. Yeah, we can't do five. So four sheep. Bye. Yes. Perfect. We've got our first sheep. We just need to get them some water. And uh, we need to get them some, um, some food. Food we can do easily. Water, I'm not sure I actually have. Yeah, I don't have anything that I can bring them water at the moment. So I've dropped off my trailer. I'm going to give this a quick wash. Just look at the state of the truck. <laughs> that really needs doing. And then I need to sort something out about getting them some feed. We can definitely cut the grass. And we might get the tractor out there doing that today. And we can feed them grass as well. So that would work. Uh, I'm just wondering what our best bet going forward is, though. For uh, actually feeding them. Because I don't have... What have we got in the shop? Is there anything available to us? No. So what have we got in here that would work? We, do, we could put some bale spikes on our little uh on our little um color uh or skid steer uh but uh we need to get a baler so the choices really here are to grab ourselves rent ourselves a little baler until maybe we could afford one this is an almost perfect opportunity for one of these i think um, yeah, I think this is an almost perfect opportunity for one of these little Massey Ferguson balers. Uh, everything else, it's 56 for the Vermeer. It's 48 for this. How much is this to lease? Don't have enough money to lease that. Uh, to lease that would cost us 1,122. Does our little uh, mower that we've got... Does that do... No. So that doesn't do swats, unfortunately. So we're going to need to win row. I think we're better off doing hay anyway. Um, so best bet for today is probably go down to the shop, grab ourselves a uh, bale and something that we can put uh, some water in. And that way we can at least get them fed for today and then work out what we're going to do tomorrow. So down to the shop and we will just pull in over here. I'll get the uh, tailgate down. 
and we'll pop into the shop and see what they've got. As far as bales go, we can... Oh, wow. A square bale of hay is 1,419. A round bale of hay is 980. How much is it to lease a water trailer? A small abbey trailer, which is all we need, to be honest. Uh, that will set us back. 153. I think we're all right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to get the license plate on this and uh, then we will uh, we'll get this leased. Well, I don't think I've got to take it, though. So set the license plate to Zach B to match our truck. Um, oh, we want to put it on the back. So, okay, there we go. Uh, rim color. Go chrome to match the rest of our truck. And we will lease that for 200. Oh, no. No, 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 no. We're, we're not looking to add extra cost. That nearly doubled the price changing those wheels. Uh, so, yep, we will lease that for 153. Uh, that leaves us with, oh, and we've just sold some metal. So we've gone up to 2,177. That's perfect because it means now we can afford one of these bales. So customize that. We're just going to buy one. Yes. Okay, let's get them loaded up. And the bale's been loaded into the truck, so we just want to get that strapped down. I'm hoping that uh, uh, we might be able to close up the back. Let's have a look. Is that going to cause a problem? Nope, we're all right. And then reverse this up. And we can hook up to the water trailer. Having that... Uh, Having the metal sell on a regular basis automatically is just making things so much easier for us. Are you turning? Yeah, you are. So, uh, yeah, that is uh, that is saving our bacon more than once. So back down and into our logging camp. You love that entranceway. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, I want to see if we can back this down to the water over here and fill this up. I'm hoping that we can fill up from any, uh, any river here. Uh, that would definitely make things easier if we only have to go from the river here to the uh, sheep. Come on. Oh, keep it straight. There we go. Into the river. Yeah, we can fill up from the river. That is perfect. And I'm just going to pop open the uh, the rear tailgate because that is not overly happy. That bale sitting there without the uh, with that tailgate closed. So that's fine. We know we can uh, we can handle that. And then, if I'm careful, I can not only park my bale over this, but the water as well. Empty out the water. Take off the straps. And is that going down? Is it not low enough? It's not low enough. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get my... Uh, I'm going to have to get my uh, little skid steer back here before we can actually empty this trailer. Unless I've got some other wet... Well, this is unorthodox. But let's see if we can do this with a piece of equipment that absolutely is not designed to do it. Turn this round here. And, oh, actually, we've got, we have got something we can do this with. Turn this on. Yeah. Having the wheel loader about is actually going to be a godsend, I think. Also, we need to give this and probably a load of our other equipment a good wash. Uh, it's going to help with uh, the maintenance of them and everything like that. The other job I need to do today is uh, we need to go and uh, try and create a driveway or a, or a path through to our uh, woodland area that we've got behind here. Look at this. Straight up, straight off. Perfect. This should now feed our sheep for a good while, at least until we can get our own uh, production of hay up and running. 
Put that down there. Off the front. And yep, there we go. That will keep them fed for a good while. And this bale still has 5,000 litres in it. Yep, that is definitely going to work for a good while. So let's just push that over to there. Nicely out the way. And it'll keep the sheep happy. And with that done, I am absolutely going to take the opportunity to uh, clean this. Because that is a very, very dirty wheel loader. Uh, I think this is probably now our dirtiest piece of equipment on the car, uh, on the uh, logging operation. So yeah, we definitely need to get that fixed. And looks like we've got a great demand for... If it's Rural Farm Sub, I'm betting that's wood chips. Yep, that's exactly what that is. 454. Best price is still in January for 674. So I'm going to hold on to that. Uh, we're trying to build up quite a big uh, amount of the uh, amount of wood chips to go and sell when they are at their best price. So we'll uh, we'll leave that for now. And that means that we are all done. Almost all done, actually, with this. Um, I think what we want to do is probably give... I'm not going to give the... Oh, no, I am going to give the bucket a wash. We'll give the bucket a wash now. And uh, we'll also go and give the log grab a wash. Don't think anything else needs washing right now, though. We've got a little bit of rain kicking about now. Looks like it's, uh, I mean, the sky is clear, so I think this is a very light shower. I'm not expecting it to last very long. Clear skies like this don't tend to hold a lot of rain, thankfully. Um, and all of our stuff we're actually putting under cover anyway. In fact, yeah, I'm not sure that that is particularly heavy rain, which is good. There we are. So that's that done. And then we've just got the log grab to get as well. The last implement on this. I don't think we've ever washed any of the stuff with this wheel loader since we got it. I think this is the first time in sort of three years we're up to on here now. Uh, that we've, we've actually washed the wheel loader down. But then that was the case with everything. Because we've only recently put our washer in. So, um... Yeah, that's uh, that's worked out really well for us in uh, in finally managing to get everything clean. I'm not sure how clean my little skid steer is, so uh, we might have to do that. Certainly, some of its implements are still pretty dirty. But that then is that done. All right, let's close up the back of this and turn that off. Is that already dirty on the inside? Wow, it is. Look at that. Right, so the next thing I want to look at, uh, as I was saying earlier, is as somebody pointed out quite rightly, this being built all here makes it very difficult for us to access our tree farm that we've got at the back here, which all of these lodgepole far uh, pines are growing up quite nicely at the moment. So we want to make sure that when these reach their 32 meter height, uh, we can get in here and access them. To do that, I think our best bet is probably to put a roadway through here, uh, just into here. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to do a little bit of landscaping to do that. Let's pop into here then and into construction and into landscaping. Come round here, and uh, ideally, I don't think I don't think I want that tree. I think that's uh, we can get round it. We can get round it. So let's uh, go painting, and we want not mud, but what have we got? Flagstones, asphalt. Oh wow! Kind of need sand i think uh, i want to change the shape and i want to enlarge it a bit yep yeah, there we go uh maybe uh that might do it actually if i go in like that 
into that area and we do the same at about the same sort of distance round yep and then we got a sort of a staging area back here then behind our shed like this let's up the size of this and then we can get a nice sort of circular set like so yeah and then i want to take that right down again to about that size and we want to make sure that we've got a route off that road there uh, that comes through there and sort of bring this out of it as well there we go and then just at the edges here i want to bring this in again a little bit that's a bit wide what it is i think like that that i think is uh is pretty cool i'm liking that a lot there we go let's have a look what that looks like yeah look at that that's a good uh route round to the back of our shed here and easy access to all this if i take the truck and just drive around on it i think that is going to uh be pretty cool and that hasn't cost us hasn't really cost us anything to to do that but yeah looking at that and looking at the width of everything i'm happy with that and that gives us then easy access to all of these as they grow up they're getting closer and closer all the time to how we want to deal with them and uh, we really want to get these uh, logical pines up to the 35.6 and then we can come around here with the trailer and and get them sorted that might actually also be a good trailer park for stuff later on as well Right, other thing I want to do is we want somewhere to park our truck in front of here. I want to get this so that it's a little bit smoother. So back into the construction and landscaping. I'm going to go quite big with this. And just try and level that out a bit. And go a little bit smaller. Level out all around the front here. Not really costing me any money which is good news because that means yep yeah, things are pretty nice and level and then what we can do is uh, just make a gravel area in the front i think so uh that's gravel uh, if i take this up quite large yeah that's not what i want let's change the shape and that's in front like so and then uh, take the size of it right down. And I'm just going to do a little roadway off here. Like so. It goes like that a little bit. And like that a little bit. It gets oh, right in front of myself. Let's move me out of the way. Yeah, it's a pity you can't do stuff under yourself. Right, uh, so change that, enlarge it, and there we go. Like that. Right, let's bring that in a little bit, because that is a bit big. Uh, where I've got a truck coming in. Oh, so, there we go. That's better. Right, and then this... Just comes over here, down that, and we park up. I like that a lot. That is really cool. So our yard is, is coming along very, very nicely at this point. We've got uh, our workshop over here, along with our pressure washer and our fuel tank, which does not have anything in it at the moment, so we need to get a delivery of fuel. Um, we've got our two trailers are sort of parked over here. At some point, we'll probably have to put another shed in. Um, we've got all of our stuff under here and all pretty fairly clean at the moment. Our three trailers over here. And yeah, we just need to put the water trailer somewhere, probably under the tree, I think. 
And yeah, we need to find somewhere really to store that as well. So first, I'm going to put the water trailer away. Uh, I think we can put it somewhere down by the fuel tank. I think it'll, uh, there's a little bit of space there that that will go. So let's hook this up. I don't think we're going to need it very often with the number of sheep we have at the moment. I do kind of want to double the number of sheep. And in fact, I think we can do that at the moment. Uh, we've got 3,024. If we can get 10 sheep on the farm by the end of the day, that would be really good. Uh, this will park nicely behind the workshop. Put that there like that. And then we will head, uh, we'll grab the flatbed trailer we've got here and we'll head over to the shop uh over to the sawmill and pick up our little skid steer and get that back here as well it has definitely got darker since that rain started falling uh really really has wow look we've, we've even got another set of uh beans out which is good i'm not gonna load them up at the moment i'm leaving all of these here right now until we know what the next stages of our construction is we need to we need to move towards those we need to keep the money coming in with the uh with all of our uh, uh with all of our productions uh especially from the roller coaster the roller coaster is uh, kind of the main income for stuff from here we've sold a lot of stuff on the train uh, and i'm trying to avoid doing that and so we should be able to make money from just delivering to the roller coaster rather than anything else. And if uh, if we can make the money that way, uh, that's going to move us forward on here as well, which is all good. So uh, very much trying to keep everything running as it should and, uh, and avoid just up selling things. If I can do that, then... Uh, that's going to move us forward a lot faster on here than if we were uh, to just keep selling a load of stuff all the time. We've got the constant income coming in from our uh, metal at the moment. The iron furnace is, is a great way for us to, to continually get uh, money without having to do too much work and allowing us to concentrate on what we've got here otherwise. So let's get this unloaded. And so there. And unload it. There we go. And then uh, I'm going to put the trailer away. Oh, I'm going to wash this. We're going to wash this JCB, I think. And then uh, we can put it away knowing it's nice and clean. Like everything else on here. We want to sort the maintenance out by giving it a good wash. And, uh, and that will then mean it doesn't deteriorate quite so fast as if we keep them really dirty all the time. There we go. We could, if we got really desperate, sell the woodland that we bought over the other side of the river now that we've got our tree farm going. But I don't really want to do that. In fact, I'm tempted to get some uh, get some saplings and go and replant that uh, that area we've got up there because uh once we burn our way through our own tree farm here uh it would be really useful to be able to go over there and cut some big trees from there so uh yeah maybe that's the way to go let me let me know in the comments what you think to, to that plan maybe we can just uh go and do some planting on the other side of that hill where there is nothing at the moment and uh maybe get that to be a little bit more productive overall back this to here there we go and trailer off right let's go park this up uh it's been a productive day on here we've got a lot of our stuff done and uh and finished off as i was hoping to do and we've got our sheep started i think think we can buy some more sheep now so uh some more of these 
I think, oh, can we max out the pen? We can't max out the pen at the moment. Uh, the most they could do is 11, and we do not have enough money to do that. Uh, we do have enough money to get eight more. So, bye. Yes. I don't have enough money. Ah, six more. Bye. Yes. There we go. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, did I end up buying? I think I ended up buying. No, they're both at eight months, so that's good. Wow, perfect. And so we've got 10 sheep now. And they will start producing some wool fairly soon, I think. Yep, there we go. Uh, health is doing well. Uh, zero wool coming out yet. But as the health goes up, uh, so will the number, uh, so will the amount of wool they produce. So in a couple of days, I think we'll get our first wool out. We just need to get started then on trying to get a spinnery placed so that we can produce some fabric. We are going to be getting some more money in. Uh, we need to go and cut some more trees. And uh, basically, we need to save up for the spinnery. I think I've worked out where I want to place the spinnery now. Uh, it's going to be up at our uh, sawmill that we own. Uh, people have been saying, oh, why don't you build stuff up there for a while? And uh, yeah, I agree. I think, uh, I think it's the perfect place for us to build uh, productions and things that we need so let's get this in position so the idea here is that we're gonna set this up at uh, at this point here down in the yard and then string the uh the cable up to the top uh, so i need to make sure wherever i put this i am not putting it in the way of everything and that we have a clear view of the top so let's get our truck and get the logging trailer out first uh, so that we know that that's not going to be hampered by the location of this. And uh, yeah, then we'll be able to load that up straight down here. Go back into here. And attach up. Uh, attach these up as well. And then carefully pull this out so yeah we're just going to fill this up we're going to take it down to uh the sawmill i think or we might just do a direct sale somebody did suggest that i grab two six meter um containers and do it that way and that would be a great way to get quick cash we also have our metal production doing the selling and we probably need to run up there actually and refill that today as well. So uh, yeah, plenty of things that, that need to, to keep happening. Right, let's put this about here-ish. We're only going to be blocking our grass equipment that way. So uh, lower that. And then what I want to do is... Now this may not work simply because if i go like this am i going to be able to actually anchor to anything and i think that's going to be unlikely so uh, let's get this up the top and see if it will actually work so i can take this up to this dead tree up here oh wow attachment point on the tree needs to be lower than the yard as this yard supports only uphill yarding so there we go we've got to bring the yarder up here and get it attached down there so we'll learn something new. So let's uh, lift this up, uh, fold it down, and we'll get it up the hill, get uh, ourselves set up to the top point, and try and work out where the best place for us to connect it to from up there is gonna be. So as before, we'll bring it into this point here and try and connect it up. Actually, we did it slightly further forward because we've got all of these uh, bushes up here and we want to try and avoid having to place our logs into there so uh, it's going to be down like that i think and i think i can see yeah there's a couple of trees that might work for this uh, if we can put it high enough so we'll park this here unfold it uh, lower it down there we go and grab our rope Ooh, 
Nope, no one do that. I want to grab the rope. Right, let's head that back down to our logging yard. So this tree here, this dead tree here, I, I'm never really planning to take that down. We've got a, a nice clear root. If I put it up nice and high, so there, that should give us a good run down to here. Uh, where does it go over our sheds? Actually, at this corner. So yeah, that is uh, that is nigh on perfect for where we want it to be. So uh, the next thing we need to do is grab the Volvo. Actually, grab the Volvo here, and uh, and get this back up there so that we can start cutting some trees down. We can't get into our own forestry area yet because that is currently uh, only at 23 meters. So we need to let those trees grow a little bit longer before we go i've just realized this uh, actually could do with a bit of maintenance before we head up so this is why we have our workshop here uh, we can come in and just repair this oh ow seven thousand nine hundred and forty six on the repairs for that so that's half our money today already not really what i was aiming for um, but we are uh, we are able to get it moving. I think the most immediate way for us to make money off this today uh, and make the most money is probably to get our these logs taken down and uh, creating bowls and pepper grinders. If we can do that, we'll be uh, able to very quickly get uh, some money in over the next few days so we'll probably take them down there and not down to the sawmill uh we, we do need at some point to start giving stuff back down to the sawmill um but for now i think we'll be better off just uh cutting trees and taking them down yeah uh, we want to clear the top off of here so let's take this tree first and i want to try and also start just giving myself uh the same types of trees all the time so if i can uh, target ponderosa pines for this first load that will be good there's a couple of them down here and let's get those out of the way so back into here and grab that up uh, check we're doing the right length so six meters yep that's what we want pick that up if we can get our stuff in the right way there we are and then back this over to here and uh and under our pickups what does that attach itself to uh yeah so it's attached itself to three trees there what i want to try and do is get it to attach to the dead trees um because that helps us oh wow why did that do that that makes things more difficult for us. Let's pick that up the floor. Spin it around. And we can then go down the mountain slightly to drop these off. Uh, like that. And cut. And cut. And cut. Perfect. Yeah, that was not a very big tree. This one, though, is much bigger, and I've done a better job of getting it over here. So let's cut it and drop it. Nice six meter length, although it is now going down the mountain. That's all right, as long as we can get this into a, a fairly good set of uh, piles over here, we should be all right. So next one I want to target is probably a little bit further down. We are going to have to get the stump grinder up here at some point because uh, it's going to get harder and harder to get down in here if the uh, stumps are getting in our way. Right, let's cut another tree. And down it goes. Just don't fall too far down this slope, please. Timber! Oh, wow. Nope, but it has fallen into this, so we need to cut this as well. There we go. And that should mean, yeah, that it just slides off down the mountain. 
trees do not seem to be falling how I want them to today. This one especially has been cut several times at this point and is not going to fall. It's a case of making it so unstable that it just will not stay where it is. Here we go. Let's go uh, perfectly across it horizontally like this. Maybe that will do the trick. Yeah, there we go. Very, very unstable. But down the mountain. And it's just really weird how they're reacting. Getting into the bigger trees now, though. And having a little bit more trouble getting exactly into the position I want to. Let's drop that down there. And down a bit more. There we go. It's grabbed it. And that is really big. Wow. To the point where we're going to need to cut the end off. Because that will not be included. So let's chop the end off that. Uh, so to about there-ish. I think should do the trick. Like that. Oh, it did make it drop the whole thing, but that's all right. We can get it to collect it again. I may have made it do something weird. And uh, and this is going to be very, very interesting. Because that thought it was doing cutting. Pull that down here. I think we're going to get stuck on that tree if we're not careful. Trying to avoid taking down the... Uh, deadwood we do want to take the deadwood off here at some point and we do want to uh re uh plant all of this at some point which where am i going other way there we go um but at the moment uh the deadwood is not what i'm trying to get hold of and we're trying to i'm trying to thread the needle a little bit here i'm not sure this is exactly the direction i want to be going Given how hard it is to manoeuvre some of these uh, logs around here, I am thinking... Oh, you can see that's getting jammed. I am thinking that uh, one of the better things we could do is possibly grab a forwarding trailer or something like that and, uh, and just cut these in situ. And... Whoa! Okay. That was because we did the uh, weird thing with the cut. Let's try this again. See if it will pick it up. So, down. There we go. And cut. Yeah. Try cutting this again. I think I cut it a little too close to the end. Yeah, there we are. Much cleaner. And working much, much better. And we've got a whole load of Ponderosa Pine here now. We've got one more tree to go and cut. And, uh, and add to this pile. Um, but then I think that's probably a good place to start and see how much we can load up our trailer. This last tree is a perfect example of how not to uh, cut a tree. It slid all the way down to the bottom. And, uh, and I've had to pick it up from there. Uh, let's bring this round and turn that round. And see if we can't push this out a little bit. Yeah. And then we can get this all onto the pile. And start getting this lot transported down to the bottom. Pretty neat pile we've got up here. Uh, let's see if we can do the same at the bottom. In fact, I think what we might try and do at the bottom is see if we can uh, cut out the middleman. And load it right onto our uh, trailer straight away. And see if we can align the trailer underneath. Lots of people asking me about uh, that after we did our last one down here. So let's see. What sort of weights are we dealing with? Uh, 6.4, 3. Point, have we got an 8? I saw an 8. There's a 5. Okay, let's take some smaller stuff. So we can do, uh, we can do that one. Nope. If we can get this right. I've got it on follow me. I don't want it on the follow at the moment. Uh, attached tree is B. There we go. And B. And B. There we are. And then lift it. Oh, no. Lift it. 
Like that. And let's take it down to the bottom. So we've got our truck here. And we want to do top down view. And where is my cable? There's my cable. Right. So if we put it under here like so. And have it coming in from there. So right under the line. Like that. Maybe we can actually get this into the trailer. So where are you carriage? Here it comes. So part of the reason why I put this cable so high was so that we could uh, do this and uh, and get it into position. We'll take the follow off and lower it down. Still swinging. It's whether we can get it to swing in the back. Yeah, drop down. Yeah, here we go. Coming down into our trailer oh no up a bit and back a bit right and then down a bit and then forward a bit and it just drop off the end and then down and no nope, other way that way right there we go and down and i should be able to just drag it up to the front of this. So let's send it the right way. Drag these. Probably not overly oh, realistic, and that's why. Uh, lift it up. Uh, take it back. Just trying to adjust this, because this is a new way of doing it. Uh, just trying to work out what is the best way to do it. Probably taking a little bit of care. Uh, dropping it down like that. Yeah. So those are there. Uh, and moving that forward a little bit. Drop it down. Oh God, this is, this is more work than doing it the other way, to be honest. But if it goes in, that's great. And N. And M. And then there we go. And yeah, so I can move it about a little bit with this, but it's fiddly and you end up with uh, a little bit of trouble uh, if you're not careful like that, where I've got that front one stuck and there's not much I can do about it. I'm not convinced. I think it'd be easier just to create a big pile and load up that pile, to be honest. I think this is the reason why you don't normally see it done this way. Right, let's disconnect them. Ah, detach trees. There we go. Done. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to move the truck out of the way and we're going to do this the previous way. As I'm piling these logs up here, I remembered exactly what it was that I wanted money for. It's, it's not initially for the spinnery. It's for this. Uh, there's a Potinger Impress uh, 1250F Pro that's come up in the shop. We need to grab this um, because, yeah, we need a baler for the farm uh, or for uh, creating our bales. So, uh, yeah, really fortuitous. We spoke about getting, possibly getting one of those last time. 51% um, off. Uh, we only need to sell a few logs to, to buy it. And uh, yeah, that's what I was. Uh, that's what I was thinking of uh, of doing. So um, yeah, we got to earn a little bit of cash because we have uh, we have our sheep to feed. I mean, they're not going through this very quickly, but to have a baler that we can count on and can use to make that stuff uh, would be perfect. How long that's going to be in the shop, I don't know. So uh, I'm just praying it's going to be there for long enough. Let's lift that up a bit. Will you attach and you? Oh, wow. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, these are 600 kilograms each. So uh, we, we're getting things done quite nicely here. And uh, our logs are going down. And we are... Yeah, we've almost got rid of this pile. Final set of logs from 
top. So we'll try and get these onto our pile as well. Back. And then across. And then down onto the pile like that. Perfect. Uh, we'll just get it to pull across a little bit. Trying to do these uh, little adjustments are always a pain. There we go. And drop them. Stop that one to try and move. Whoa, that scattered things a bit. Never mind. We'll be able to clean that all up. So let's send uh, the carriage back up to the yarder uh, while we jump in this and get this pile of logs loaded up onto our trailer. I don't think it's going to uh, take much than a single section, but I really, really want to get this whole thing um, delivered today and then run up to the mine and grab some more metal because we need more of that coming in it's already got us back up to where we were earlier and so yeah the mine is very important uh so are the the logs and the trees uh but uh, all of it is going to help us get a that baler and then b that spinnery almost all of that on that grab but my trouble is I need them out of the way because they're in the way of my truck. Uh, yeah, needed to have this truck a little bit further back for loading these up. And I probably should have moved it when uh, I started doing it. Carefully place those onto there. Get told off if I, uh, if I don't. And move that in. There we go. Reseat that. That should be plenty to keep us going there. And bring this in, down, into there. Yeah, we are going to have to start doing more uh, logging stuff and more wood production soon uh, in order to keep the uh, roller coaster and the ship going. Uh, we've got a few bits and pieces there that will keep us going. Whoa, that is stuck on. Oh, we'll have to pick that up from the other side and throw it on. Um, but... Uh, we, I know that I'm going to hit a brick wall if I if I don't start things like uh, that running. The other thing we're going to need is the furniture factory. So uh, we've got a fair amount of money we need to raise in the next bit. So it's going to be uh, a fair amount of logging, I think. What will really change things is when we can start getting into our tree farm around the back here. If we can start cutting these trees down, they are at 23.2 meters at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, as soon as we can get in here and start cutting this, that is going to make a massive difference to us. Uh, we'll be able to get a lot of wood done in a very short period of time. Right, let's back this off. I'm going to uh, back this back into here and then we can head out and uh, go and deliver these and start getting some bowls and some uh, pepper pots made. And that way, we can get a steady income from that, a steady income from metal. And before you know it, we're going to have the money we need to get everything we want to get done, done. Down to the wood turners. Oh, we got, what have we got out here? Oh, we've got railings sitting out here. That would be an immediate uh, money maker. Absolutely, that would be an immediate money maker. Uh, what? Three, four thousand liters of railings? Four thousand liters of staircase railings. Uh, that's a thousand each. Uh, if we put them on the train to Elm Creek, that's a bit much. But Silver Run Market would pay us a uh, thousand each. So that would be another four thousand there. What about in here? Um, we also have another 4,000 litres of staircase railings. So I am going to uh, disable that. In fact, no, they are already disabled. So let's uh, enable that. So activate that and activate that. Um, that both needs wood. So uh, we'll do that. And then I think we're going to have to come back down here and get some of those because 
that is going to make a massive difference. Uh, 8,000 liters of staircase railings that we can sell. Uh, yeah, let's go do that and make some money off them. Uh, that would be uh, huge for us, I think. And back this up. And then we'll unstrap all of this. So like that. Surprise it doesn't just immediately take them. Which is interesting. Are you maxed out with the uh, amount you've got? No. Does this only take certain types of wood? Will it not take Ponderosa Pine? That would be a bit weird. What type of trick? Ah. Got it. There we go. Right. Now we have 16,000 litres of wood. I'm also going to set these... Uh, no, we'll, we'll come back down here in our uh, little uh, Unimog with the... Uh, with our skid steer on the back and we'll get those sold I bet no it's going down to silver on market so that will give us a good amount of money for that so i've got back up to my locking camp and of course i can't use the oh i can't use the uh unimog for this because the unimog is up the top uh dealing with that however what we can use, and I was going to use my truck for a minute, but uh, we should be able to fit those on the back of this, maybe. Or even just on the flatbed and then come back for our uh, setup. So, yeah, let's uh, let's do this. Uh, we'll use our truck for this for once. We can fit four on the back of this. We won't be able to fit eight. So uh, we'll have to use the, uh, the flatbed trailer for this uh, and leave the skid steer down at the wood turners but that is fine i am quite happy with that let's start this up get this onto uh, the trailer and somebody was saying oh i thought you were gonna back this onto the trailer uh, it's very true we should be backing this onto the trailer it puts more weight or it distributes the weight a little bit better if i do that so Let's do that. Get that onto there like so. Uh, it means that it's not all back heavy. Uh, it's not great for, for how it is anyway. Because it does mean that uh, it's, it's sort of front heavy instead. But that's alright. Do we have one under there? We don't have one under there. That got it. Ah, it's got it. So, we'll shut down. Let's head back to the wood turner and uh, and get those railings sold this is actually perfect Eight thousand liters is gonna be exactly enough for us to uh to make the money we need in order to uh do this let's unfold that dump on and come out uh, now, I did turn the wood turning on for the... Or I did turn the production on for these with our wood as well. Simply because I needed one litre for this. So, let's get this into here. I'm hoping uh, that we'll be able to just get that one litre and I can immediately turn it off. So, into here and on right and then back it out let another one spawn like that and then turn it off yeah uh let's uh deactivate that so we've gone one liter over but that means that we will get the full amount off of here close that down oh and drop the sides of the trailer down as well and then we can just load this trailer up here and uh and get this all uh down to the market to sell it last one we'll get that on to our uh trailer oh that is spinning right around i love how maneuverable this jcb is spin it right around it spins right too far around sometimes um but uh at the moment uh just far enough for us to get that stacked on top 
We'll get that re-strapped down. And uh, yeah, then we'll just park this up uh, at the side here and we'll come and collect it in a bit. Um, but with 16,900 in the bank, we are looking at being in a very, very good position once we've sold these at Silver Run Market. And Silver Run Market is just up here on the right. Where's the actual sell point? I think the sell point is in... Oh, there's two sell points. So we will uh, pull over this one first, which I don't think it is. Nope, it isn't. So over the second one over here. There we go. 25,708. That is more than enough for us to go and get that baler we need. So just round the corner and over to the shop and yeah let's go buy it fantastic that has worked out really really well um and it is still there twenty three thousand two hundred and forty three so we'll set the number plate to match our tractor so that's uh that's for gareth and we'll set it to uh the orange because that's what's on the, uh, that's the color of our tractor as well uh okay that and wheels bkt's or trelleborg i'm gonna put the bkt's on it and uh yeah nothing no extra cost for either of those so let's buy the baler yes please and we are all good if only I could get it onto the trailer. I wonder if I can. Let's uh, let's open up the trailer. Let's unplug all of that. And see if I can connect this onto that. I think it's probably wider than the trailer, to be honest. Yeah, that's wider than the trailer. I think I'm going to have to get my tractor down here. And see if I uh, can do it that way. Oh, yeah. There's no way that is going on the trailer. So we'll have to get the tractor down here next time and get that picked up. I am going to go now and pick up my skid steer and get that back to our logging camp. We are headed up to the shop. We have to go and pick up the baler that we bought last time and get that back to here. Uh, we're going to need to refill our iron furnace as well we're gonna have to head up to the mine and pick up some more of that um, and we need to check on what's happening with the next stage of construction at both of our shipyard and the roller coaster so our first stop is down here at the shop and we're just gonna pull in and pick up the baler that we purchased last time really fortuitous for this to come up we need it to start moving our sheep along and uh, make sure that we have enough feed for them we've only got a single bale at the moment and this is going to make a big difference to that uh while we're down here though as i said we need to go and check out what's happening with the roller coaster and we have plenty of stuff here except oh wow so we are on to the next set up here we need to give them uh some more planks long but beyond that uh we need chairs tables shingle uh barrel and a bucket those we can get the shingle uh that's not a problem we have we have something that we can do there uh in fact we may be able to do that now planks we can do now as well so we'll get those down here too chairs and tables barrels and buckets those are all new productions so uh, we are going to have to head up to uh, the barrel. We are going to have to head up to the barrel factory and check on how much that will cost to purchase and start planning for that. Uh, we're also going to have to check on the furniture factory and see how much that is. Uh, both of those are things that we need to purchase. So let's head up here and have a look i think the barrel factory is this one just here so we'll pull in and have a look yep barrel making so that is perfect uh how much is this uh 120 000 for the barrel making factory that is a lot of money 
So uh, looks like that's going to be a little while doing that. Now, the other one we want is the furniture factory. And I'm just trying to have a look. So the bakery is there. What is that there? I think that might be the furniture factory, in fact. Let's have a quick look. Uh, framing. Nope. Actually, I think the furniture factory is this one up here on the... Yes, on the right. This is the furniture factory right near the wood turning factory. And this is 110,000. So, yeah, we are going to need 130,000 uh, pounds in order to... No, 230,000 pounds, sorry. In order to get the next stage of the roller coaster done. Um, it looks like we're going to be doing metal for a while and uh, and getting stuff moving with the sheep. And hopefully, if we can get stuff moving with the sheep, because it's only 60000 for us to build our spinnery, uh, we should then be able to get the boat completed. I started heading back down to the farm and then realized we need to check on the situation with our boat as well. So it's constructing nicely. What we need are... Uh, actually, nothing at the moment. We've got some wood beams sitting here. It's working through them, so uh, we'll know the next stage of this, I think, by the end of the day. So, uh, at the moment, the plan is to head back to our farm, uh, back to our logging camp, and go and get the bits we know. We, we've got some shingles. Uh, we've got some long planks. We only need one pallet of each of those. Uh, and we can bring them down to the roller coaster and get them delivered and at least keep that bit of it moving. Now, of course, what I'd ideally like to do is get my Unimog down from uh, the mountain. It is it is currently running the Yarder. And if I could get it down, I could then get everything transported at once. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that. I don't really want to get it down from there. We don't have... Uh, we're, we're probably going to be getting up there to get some money in later. So, we'll have to use this again. Now, getting a pallet of wood onto here is going to be fairly difficult. So, we might have to do a little bit of extra running around as a result. Uh, let's back this up here and then go and get the trailer on. Um, our teleskid is there, so we can put that on to the flatbed and, uh, and take that with us. But yeah, I don't know how I'm going to get the, uh, the long planks onto here. Let's connect that up and bring this out. Uh, we have more than enough stuff uh, elsewhere. I suppose I could put it on the front of the, uh, of, the front of our bit here and uh, and just strap it all down not the safest way to transport things and not really the way i want to do it um but i think needs must as they say so let's bring this here the other way to do it would be to go and drop them all off come back get the skid steer or get our telly skid and then uh go all around again i'm gonna back this on said this uh people have said this several times so i should back it on put the weight towards the truck not uh not towards the back so we'll do that uh might lift the truck off the ground a little bit possibly especially as we have to get quite far back in order to get our uh forks on turn it off jump in take the trailer down and then we can clamp all of this down and make sure that it's not going to go anywhere right let's go get ourselves some long wooden planks a few people have suggested that rather than having the truck bed or on the back of this uh, i should put the flatbed attachment on and it's not a bad suggestion by any stretch it's uh it would make this more versatile uh, originally my plan had been not to do that because we've got the unimog and uh, and that should cover this kind of work uh, the trouble is that uh, the Unimog is uh, currently tied up, of course, doing the uh, doing the yarder, as I said before, uh, and therefore it's not so easy for us to to do that. Let's fold this down. Right. Oh, it's still strapped on. That's why. Right. 
and then take the trailer off uh, because I want to try and get this in the uh, back of the pickup if I can. Otherwise, yeah, it's going to be messy and we're going to have a, a bigger problem. So let's bring this over here. And we only need for one of these. Uh, up here and on. And yeah, you can see why I can't fit this in the truck bed as, uh, as normally would. I'm wondering if I can drop it into the truck bed um, sideways. So we'll pull this forwards. We've got a lot of defences on the side of this truck bed. Right, let's uh, do that. And then see if we can't get this on that. Yeah, messy is very much what we're doing here. Messy desperation. And that is, yeah, that's coming off. Thankfully. Not the most realistic way of doing it, but it is on there at the very least, and we can strap it down. So let's do that. Uh, and then this can go back on the uh, back on the flatbed, and uh, and we'll be able to then get the last bit that we need with the shingles down at our tiling factory. So onto there, and I am putting this on the other way around this time. Uh, let's turn it off. Right, back this up. We're going to leave the rear trailer down. And actually, I've positioned that quite well for me to be able to see out the back, which is good news. Pick that up. Connect it up. Down with the trailer. Strap this all on. And we're ready to go again. That actually has been a little bit more successful than I thought. And... Uh, fact that we've got all of those uh beams and all of those long planks should mean that we can do stuff with those um expect that we'll probably need some of that stuff for the furniture factory and maybe even some of it for the barrels eventually uh we do need to raise at least ninety thousand though to uh to get either of those started you can definitely feel the difference in weight distribution on this trailer when I put the skid steer on this way. The truck is wilder. It really is. You have to be more careful when you're driving. Uh, I expect it to sort of jackknife or move at any moment. And uh, yeah, I, I really recommend, as a result, reversing your uh, trailer on or reversing the skid steer onto the trailer um, because it does not like it when it's uh, when it's on this way around. That's extraordinary how different that is. Uh, right, before we unload the teleskid though, we need to get that unhooked. Uh, and yeah, we will make sure that uh, we put it on the other way around this time because it just makes more sense. It makes everything easier to use that way. Not impossible to do it the way I just did, but uh, definitely better doing it the other way around. Put those onto there, and then what we can do is just reverse this up to here. Put this back on, and then we'll strap everything down. Now, what we will need to do is probably drive this off at the other side uh, just to unload these. I don't think they'll unload off the forks unfortunately oh can't do that before very important you don't do that before you put the trailer down because if you do it before the trailer goes down it gets stuck in the air so, there we go it's all strapped down let's uh, head down to the roller coaster and now the weight distribution feels very different again it's it's much more sturdy and steady this way around yeah definitely want to reverse that uh, teleskid onto the back of this bring this round and see what unloads automatically definitely expecting the planks to yep uh, oh and the uh, shingle tab as well perfect let's see where that leaves us so we have ah oh, they're floor tiles not shingles we need the shingle factory 
that's oh well we at least made some money off them but uh yeah we need the shingle factory so that is going to be another purchase yeah the next stage of the roller coaster is going to be very expensive i think this is brick shingle company yeah it's this one uh it's 70 000. so this is the cheapest of them uh that we need to to buy but, oh man we've got to buy most of the remaining factories in the town in order to do this ah uh, that is uh it is getting expensive i'm wondering if there's any of them that we don't need anymore that we can sell off um because yeah uh, i could do with the cash in all honesty so we'll head back to our logging camp and uh down here we can go and grab our truck our wheel loader and our dump trailer and then we will head up to the mine we're gonna fill up with a whole load of uh, a whole load of iron ore and then get back down here uh to try and make a bit more cash we need to make so much that's another seventy thousand means we need 300,000 in order to uh, to get the next stage of the roller coaster even started. Uh, I think what we're going to do probably next time is uh, grab a couple of six meter of the containers and try filling them up. Uh, somebody said to me that uh, the nine meter ones are good. The six meter ones a couple of those pay even better so uh, i think that might be a good way to go what i need to do though first is uh, get our iron ore going again and i think we're going to do a couple of runs today uh we know that a full trailer from this will do uh, or, or will be better uh, and fill the whole thing up uh, and keep it running for a good uh, few days so I'm going to just dump that there for now. And we'll go and grab the tipper on the front. Like so, or our dumper on the front. And then we can lead our truck up the top. I prefer to do it this way around because this only goes 12 miles an hour and the truck will go a lot faster. So uh, we might as well do it this way and make sure that our convoy stays together rather than ends up uh, falling behind and uh, ultimately stopping. We've got a driver. We've got a driver. Let's get going. Up to the Iron Peaks mine. And wow, look at that. That is a very big pile of iron ore. We do not come up here often enough. Mind you, if we do two loads today, that will be... Uh, really good that will clear off a load of this so we'll stop the hired worker we'll come into here and move this to a spot where we don't have to do much uh movement to uh to load up spin around here and park it here that should be perfect turn that off and now yeah we've got a lot of iron ore here that we can get into this trailer uh, let's get loading it up and we can uh, start making some money from it. So we are going to load up two trailer fulls. Uh, we'll do two trips here and uh, hopefully that will be enough to fill up our uh, iron furnace and make us the most money from this that we can for a little while. And uh, yeah, keep that income flowing because that is exactly what we need right now. We have got a lot of stuff to buy before we can progress uh, much further. Last bucket full we need now, and this will just top this off. Uh, we'll leave this here and go and get this all uh, delivered down to our iron furnace. It won't fill up the furnace completely, uh, which is why we're going to do that. 32 litres over, and that's because... Sometimes this bucket is a little bit inaccurate. It'll hold a few extra litres uh, than its capacity. Uh, this, though, is at 48,000 litres. Oh, I think I've left. Nope, that is stopped. 
thought I'd left it running. Uh, we're good, though, so let's head on down and get this dropped off. Uh, and the other advantage of doing this in two goes is that uh, we won't be restricted by uh, the speed of our wheel loader uh, to go and drop this first load off and come back. Uh, we'll be able to do it at a much better pace with our Phoenix. And we're back down to our logging camp and our iron furnace. I've got one roll of iron sticking out the, out the back there. Uh, but what we want to do is get this backed up to the conveyor and see how much this actually gives us and, uh, and, and actually places into the factory. That way we only need to really bring as much back as we need in order to get this uh, refilled so over that comes and 48,000 liters straight into our iron furnace so let's uh, restart the production on that oh wow actually it's not that far off being full i i'm if we go and get another trailer full that'll actually keep us going for a long while because it'll top that up and then uh, we'll have more to go. I don't think there's anything else that we... Actually, there is something else I want to put in this trailer. Uh, we're going to have to load up some wood chips soon. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to leave this here for now. Let that start processing. And then when it gets fairly low again, then we'll go and top it up and, uh, and do that. At the moment, I don't think there's much point in doing that, seeing exactly how full it is. So uh, I'm going to park this here, and then I'm going to pop up to the mine, uh, grab the wheel loader, and bring that back. Because yeah, I don't think we, uh, I don't think we need to leave it up there. And so we're back with the wheel loader. We can get this down and parked up with the rest of our kit. And I think we might want to put the flatbed on our truck actually so let's park this up i've been sort of gathering stuff together here but uh, yeah let's park this up and uh, out the way not really where this parks but uh, it's fine everything shifts around a little bit there we go and then i'm gonna put this trailer back uh, in its parking spot i need to rework the trailer parking a little bit um, it's kind of in amongst a whole load of trees and doesn't easily fit. Uh, especially when I go and make my maneuvering really, really difficult. So let's move this forwards and out the way. Don't know where I'm going to put my baler yet. Uh, I will work that out in a minute. But this can go over here for now. And then over here, we want to pull this forwards and then back it up see if we can get this into space so yeah you can see there's a tree there that's a little bit in the way there's a tree at the back that's a little bit in the way uh it just just kind of needs tidying up a little bit it's tight but it all fits go and pull forwards done out we get uh disconnect and there we go now can i fit two six meter uh containers onto this trailer is this the trailer that expands i'm not sure it is uh we'll give it a try in a moment to see if it does i uh, need to connect it up first there we go and then pipes on so does this expand or is that the other one not oh yeah it does okay yeah we should be able to fit two six meter trailer uh two six meter containers onto this so um to do that, what we're going to need is our wheel loader, uh, which again is going to be following us about because uh, I'm going to need the very large uh, box that we've got on it. So let's put this into the shed behind where this should be parked. Pop it off and switch over to these. And it's been a while since we've loaded the wheel loader onto our trailer to uh to get stuff uh something we were doing a lot in the early days 
And now we don't do it so much. So we'll back this onto here. And then uh, that will make our trip over there easier. Oh, wow. Or not, because I think I need to widen everything. So out with the side sections. And then out with the ramps as well. Move them to about there-ish. And now we should have enough space for our wheel loader. Yeah, there we go. Much, much easier fit. I'll have to put all of those back in when we uh, when we come to putting the actual uh, bits on. But uh, this will do for now. There, there. Strap it down as much as we can. Let's fold it up. There we go. And... Oh, I'm going to have to reverse back and turn around. But uh, we now should have everything to get a couple of containers. And a couple of containers will get us a long way towards where we want to be. So, uh, yeah, let's get cracking. Back down to the shop. And in. Right. Uh, let's get the rear... Uh, it's off and oh, we need to get all of our belts undone as well. One more. There we go. Start this up. Off the trailer it comes. And yeah, it's not going to go back on the trailer because uh, we're going to have a trailer full of containers. So what I want to do is close that up again. And then in with our sides. Okay, so interesting thing to know after mucking around with this a little bit. You can only move the sides in if uh, you've got the ramps out. Uh, which I didn't know. That's, uh, that's really cool. So now I can uh, do this. And what I want to do now is just push out the back of this if we can get this to do this no um, there we are extend that out that should give me the extra distance I need to get the uh, extra uh, one on here the extra container on I uh, just check nothing new in the shop no so uh, we want to go down here and actually it's here in containers right so we want the six meter container uh lizard forestry uh on the side and uh we want the olive color to it so buy one of those and then we'll get one in the J uh, jcb or oh, sorry in the john deere yellow as well fast goes to train again and this should give us a chance uh, to get quite a bit of money off these. Widen that and on. I am intrigued to how different, I'm intrigued to see how different the amount of money we make off uh, two six meter ones like this is compared to a single nine meter one. Uh, Obviously, we can fit more wood in uh, in two six meter ones than we can in one nine meter one, but it also costs extra money. That should, yep, slot into place. And then I'm gonna grab the second one, and we're gonna have to remove these and uh, to load them up because, of course, we can't open the backs up while uh, while they're next to each other. So, uh, yeah, it's very much going to be uh, a case of unloading probably the, the yellow one and, uh, and unloading that up and putting it on the trailer and then the other one. So uh, I am going to see if I can put these directly into the... Uh, uh, directly into... I am going to see if we can put stuff directly off the yarder into uh, these trailers. Has that worked? Yes, it has. Is that going to run into the back of this? Quite possibly. 
uh, and really I wanted to do that following me the other way around so we'll see how this goes uh, but yeah that is now really quite long I'm hoping this is going to fit back in our yard and not cause too much problem our trailer also seems to be in need of repairs almost back at the logging cap I am uh, or I have been going a little bit slower to try and make sure that we don't lose the wheel loader it does seem to still be coming in behind us which is good news uh, this longer trailer is uh, freaking me out a little bit though I think we're going to be all right. So, ha! Now, my truck is in the way. So, uh, let's clear things out the way, get ourselves into a good position for next day. Just sort of clear things up a little bit. Oh, start that up. And then do the trailer. Get this out of here. Get it parked up uh, in its normal shed is this one over here back the trailer up over the other side of our workshop need to fill this um uh need to fill this fuel bowser up at some point i think well, there we go and back it up there we are I'll drop that off there that closes and attach the trailer and then this can be parked up. Just go and do the straps. And into our house. Come on, saying I should add some decorations around to this. And I think I think we should. I think at some point I'm going to do a bit more decorations around the house. And then we'll just pull this forward here. And that will park this out of the way for later on. Make it easy for us to get these off. And then pull this round and we'll park this up in the shed as well. Uh, that way it'll be ready for next time and we can pull things out. I think we're going to be up the mountain next episode, uh, cutting some six meter logs, getting them down here and trying to fill both of these containers. Uh, makes sense to me to try and do that and uh, earn a bit of extra cash. I don't really have many places to put this. I think we're going to put this with all the other grass equipment in the end shed. Normally where the tractor parked, but uh, we can move that along to the next one and I'll work something out for other bits and pieces. For the other things we've got to park, uh, not much actually. Just the Unimog and the, uh, uh, and the excavator, both of which are up at the top. So uh, we can be a little bit fluid in where everything gets parked at the moment but the stuff under cover that we want to put under cover there we go and that has cleaned up our yard a little bit quite nicely just gonna have a quick check on our sheep uh how much is left in this bale but yeah there's still there's still more left in this bale than they have food in here so we're not in any great rush actually to get the grass cut and do that um and we are up to 377 litres of wool. So that is fantastic. Things are moving forwards. We do need 300,000. And so that's what we're going to be working towards next. Yeah, might have noticed we're missing the bed off the back of our truck as we're heading down to the shop. Uh, that's because after our conversation last time uh, about... One of the uh, the ways that we can improve things around here uh, was the possibility of having a flatbed. Well, wouldn't you know, it seems that the sales gods have listened to me and there's something waiting for us down at the shop. Um, but we've got lots of other things to do today as well. Uh, so our main objective today is going to be getting a whole load of six meter logs cut and transported down to the two... Uh, containers that we purchased last time so uh, once we've got this truck bed sorted we're going to go and get that sorted as well first look at this beauty it is a cabin a crew cabin version so it will fit on our, our on the back of our truck uh it has got a few upgrades already so it's got the wides on it uh we only need the standard because of our setup uh, not that that will save us anything unfortunately 
Uh, no silver, uh, no special editions, configuration. I, I could put the service rack on it, but it reduces our space. So uh, we'll remove that. Side rails, uh, we won't do, I don't think. And main color, uh, if we put it in the olive new age, that works really well as well. Uh, license plate, we set to Zach B to match the actual, uh, to match the main truck. So, uh, also I'm gonna set that to the black. Okay. And uh, yeah, that will do us. Oh, we actually need to add it on. There we go. Right. And let's buy that 7,254. Uh, over 50% off um, is going to make a big difference to uh, how well we can do things around our farm. Uh, we're still at 26,000. We are still saving up for that uh, 30, or oh, sorry, 300,000 worth of factories. Um, but we can work our way through those as they become available a little bit further back. Oh, yeah. Do it along that edge there. That makes things easier. And yeah, this is going to mean that we can transport a whole lot more uh, with this, uh, especially when our Unimog is being used for things like uh, running the Yarda as it is now. I don't know if this will give us the chance to use our truck trailers on it as well. It might do because it does have the fifth wheel. Um, and it is sort of low enough compared to our truck, I think, or to our lorry. Just have a look. Can Will this get underneath any of these and hook them up? Uh, I think it's about as powerful as our truck is. So uh, that would be quite something. You would make this much more... Uh, okay, no. Uh, there is a way to raise and lower this, but I, I don't think it's going to fit under that. I think we'd need a... Uh, a gooseneck trailer to, to fully take advantage of this but this does mean that uh this truck is now a whole lot more versatile and uh gonna be a lot easier for us to transport stuff around when we need to which is perfect next thing we need to do is probably unload one of these see if we can get it into a position where the yarder uh, can just load stuff down Bring this round here like this. And, oh, do I need to? I think I need to open this on the, no, we can't open it on there. So we need to open it at the back here. So we'll get this off first. Let's lift in. So in with that and off. I do like how well these work. They, they work so, so well. And then, I'm going to uh, try and get it under my yard line. So that would be about there-ish, I think. A little bit further. Right. So the idea is we bring stuff down on the yarder um, and we bring it down. Yeah, that's close enough. Uh, in a place that we can just drop it straight to the back of this. And then we shouldn't have to do any kind of maneuvering with uh, our piece of kit here with our wheel loader. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how well this works. Uh, let's head up the top of the hill and start cutting some trees. Someone was asking last time why this was bouncing around so much. And, uh, yeah, it was simply because uh, we got a piece of wood stuck under the rear of it. And it ended up just making it wobble a lot. It stopped doing it now, which is good. Um, but yeah, that's that's why that was happening. Uh, we want to go and grab some trees. Have we got anything attached to this one? No, we don't. So let's get this and cut. And yeah, we're going to do all of these at six meters. Uh, we should be able to load trees in with uh, that fairly well. We'll cut uh, three trees down to start. We'll see how far that goes with them. Um, but yeah, I think we might make a uh, decent amount of cash off these logs today. And uh, in doing so, we'll get ourselves closer to buying one of our factories. Uh, and the more factories we buy, the more money we can make off of our... Uh, uh, off of the roller coaster in getting stuff delivered to it. So uh, very 
very much wanting to get that stuff done. Right, there we go. There's a few trees cut. Oh, we're going to have to get the stump grinder up here soon as well. Because I think our Volvo is going to have issues getting places in a bit. Our first tree, though, is nice and close. So open up that. Out with that. Uh, bin our head. And down. Cut. No, a bit further forward. Cut. There we go. And then should be able to spin this round and oh, going reverse with this can be a little bit tricky when you're trying to it's a bit like trying to rub your tummy and pat your head trying to turn this and uh, and steer it the opposite way at the same time right just double check that we're cutting at six meters yes ah so cut and nicely under in fact look there's the wobble again we get trees near the unimog and the Unimog just starts to wobble. That is hilarious. One of the things I think I really regret doing on this series is not uh, keeping that original, uh, not keeping the original little skid steer we had on here, that, that little Kubota one. Uh, it's a really useful piece of kit. It would have been very, very useful to have that up here while keeping the tele skids down the bottom. Um, and I'm thinking of uh, investigating the price of leasing it again and seeing if we can't uh, make a, a really useful uh, use of it again. Really useful use. That is horrible English. But you know what I mean. Uh, basically, it would be it would be very useful to have that on the, on here and uh, and and useful to us. Uh, in getting rid of stumps and actually we could then also just cut trees in situ pick them up with a grab on the front of it and uh, and and use it that way um, would be make a massive difference because this is not the easiest way to do this I'm becoming very very aware that of that the more that we uh, we do this on here uh, trying to move stuff about with this excavator be much much easier to just use the excavator to process stuff and then move stuff about so uh yeah i'm uh, i'm very much considering that i think that would make our lives much much easier and i think it would do it down the bottom i think it would do it everywhere where we uh, we're looking to use stuff around here so uh what do you guys think do you think that that's a good plan i'm, I'm pre-recording these quite a way in advance so uh, it's very possible i might just go ahead with it but uh, I'm, I'm always intrigued as to what you guys think um and uh, i always check those comments out i think lots of you at the time did comment and say uh you should have kept the little one as well as getting uh kept the kubota as well as getting the jcb and uh yeah i'm beginning to think you guys are very wise and very right i've lost the second the, the last tree and it's because it's in here under all these bushes <coughs> so we're gonna have to get the excavator into here and try and pull it out uh, this is not something that uh, would have been sorted by the kubota Right, let's uh, turn the head. I think I'm going to go in cab. Turn the head right round. Like so. And then do that. Down and in. Will that get it? Oh, no, no. Where are you going? I think we over, uh, overstretched. I think we, uh, yeah. As we're going downhill. Ah. Oh. And speaking of going downhill, that's exactly where my tree has just gone. Add a little bit more. We want to turn that head a little bit more. Will that get it? Yep, that's got it. Right. Let's back this out of here and see if we can't do that. I think I'm doing exactly what I feared would be happening. Oh, no. It's a rock this time. And that's why we fell forward because we ended up on a rock. Now we just need to navigate around these stumps to try and get this into the right position. Bring it around here. Yeah. 
It's much more of a mishmash of uh, of logs this time. Uh, but this one actually has gone a bit better. Uh, I think a flatter area up the top here though would have been uh, useful to start with. Let's lift this up and see if we can't get this onto the pile with everything else. Uh, and then we can start getting these down and see if our setup is actually going to work with these containers. Um, because if it does, this is going to be a really good way for us to get a decent amount of money fairly quickly. So, first three trees. Uh, let's have a look at the weight of these. Six, eight, one, four. Yeah, we should be able to do all these. So that, that, and that. Perfect. Lift them up. And, yeah, look at it go. Our Unimog is boogieing again. Uh, let's take them down to the bottom. So the idea is going to be to try and get these to lay down in such a way that they will just instantly go into here so down a little bit of a swing on i'll either swing into it or drag them in okay ha <laughs> of course that didn't work all uh, right start this up yeah i was hoping not to be using this but because I dumped them on the end of it, it's uh, it's not worth. So what all I'm going to do is try and nudge them off the end instead. If we can't just turn this in such a way that... Yeah, there we go. There's one in. So this will work. This absolutely will work. Just got to be careful with how I do it. Right, there we go. And then back off. That's two and three. There we go. So, yeah, it will work. I just need to be a little bit more careful uh, with the bottom end of it. So let's try this again. Uh, go with that one and that one, that one. Pull them up and back down to the bottom. My plan this time is to get them so they're lowered far enough down that they end up uh not leaning against the top bring it down yep and i want you to come this way please come this way there we go whoa too far yeah this is gonna be tough so it shouldn't be out of the realm of possibility right and bring it along come on Drop them right down on the ground. And let go, please. Nope. They need moving along a little bit. Oh, I'm pretty much guessing that if I just nudge them. No, it really has to be right at the end of it. So we need to push them in and uh, and, and get them into place. Wow, that is, um, that is a little bit finickier than I thought it would be. And therefore, a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be. Uh, again, not out of the realms of possibility for us to do fairly easily. But really? Come on. You can do it. Well, that's got one in. Two in. Oh, slightly, uh, slightly less length. Yeah, the end bits are going to be slightly shorter. But it seems that it has to be right up to the end of it. So, um, hmm... I think we might put the log grab on this and just uh, pick them up and move them each time uh, as we drop them down. Won't have to move them far, just enough to get them into the container. But it is not as simple as just dropping them down in front of the container and them loading up. We are actually going to have to do a little bit of work with the wheel load. So I've been trying to practice a bit and see if I can actually get this to work. And I have actually managed to get one load to do it. So I'm just trying to work out where the best place for me to stand is. Uh, and then it's a case of bring it down this level here. Swing out and swing back. I wonder if I can do it by getting the tips of this in. Ah. Oh. See, this is the thing. If it's slightly off, it won't quite work. Yeah. 
So, uh, I'm just going to take it that way a little bit. And then this way a little bit. And try and swing the ends in. Yeah, it doesn't... That has... Uh, for some reason, it's swinging out to the side there a bit. So, and down and bring it back this way there goes one and the others dropped and that's when you have to either pick it up again with it or you just grab this and tease it along a little bit and then it should go in like that nice and easy so yeah we do need the wheel loader here but this is filling up quite well currently uh we've got 956 liters of wood in it I think this will be our second to last collection of logs from this batch. I am trying to put the same uh, stuff into, or the same type of wood into all of these. We've got four onto this. Fantastic. Yeah, we've got a, a few left. Uh, well, we've got just two short pieces left, really, that I'm less worried about. Oops think we can grab those so uh yeah let's get these going down to the bottom and uh then yeah i think those are probably going to be a little too short for us to do anything with we'll drop them down they're swinging a bit wildly i could get the bottom ends of them in don't know if that would work nope it just caught on the ground and uh, and then it didn't work. Did work that way though. Wow. Okay. So if we can just lower them so that their tips are right on the uh, uh, right by the entrance to that, uh, maybe without doing any wild swinging, it would work really well. I think that last one I can probably pick up by hand and put in. Yep. A bit short and uh and cause a little bit of problem uh 15 000 liters i think these can hold 20 so uh yeah we need to go and cut some more trees so we want some more of these lodgepole pines and these two here will both do the trick uh i'm gonna have to cut both of them going downhill though which is a problem so uh, let's just bring this out uh get this cut here I am thinking very much that I want to go and get something that's going to make this whole thing easier. Make everything, uh, transporting all of these back to our, uh, uh, back to our yard easier than, uh, than we're dealing with at the moment. Have I got any more lodgepole pine around here? Or am I heading down that way? Are these a couple of lodgepole pines over here? I think these might be, yep. Uh, what are you? 23 meters. Uh, 36 meters. Yeah, we've got to take this one out first anyway. We've still got a few rocks and things in the way down here. Had it as close to the bottom as possible so that we can maximize what we're getting off them. Uh, but yeah, I think. Lower. Lower. Uh, I think that uh, getting a little Kubota skid steer is going to be a really good idea. First tree. Let's spin around and drop that down like that and cut. And then, yeah, we just got to pull it all the way back. And it's just such uh, a pain to get this to go exactly where I want it to. That's that's the biggest problem we have, is getting it to go exactly where I want it to and, uh, and not being able to immediately get rid of all these stumps as well. I'd like to go through, grind the stumps and, uh, and get everything back. And you see, you then get round like this. And well, that worked better than I expected. I did use the excavator a little bit, which I don't really want to be doing. But, yeah, look at that. B comes round. B gets cut. And we send the logs down to our yard to load up into the container. It's going okay. I think six trees is basically going to be the sweet spot for this. Uh, 
We've got seven in total, I think, with these three. So, yeah, it's uh, we're going to definitely get one container full. Uh, we might end up continuing to work to get the second one done as well. Right. In for our second three. Can move forward onto it. There we go. It didn't... Oh, I suppose the, the slope isn't quite so bad on this side. So it's not been quite so um, hard to... Or it's not had quite so far to fall. This is very annoying, though. I think we are on a stump, aren't we? Yeah. It goes slow, this. Very slow. But it does get it back eventually. Managed to get the last tree back. Whoa! But apparently, it doesn't want to be cut. That is a little bit weird. And puts us in a quite a difficult position, actually, to get that out. I think... Uh, I need to swing this round, swing that round the other way completely. Like that. Uh, and down. Right, let's see if we can reverse into here and grab this and pull it out. So we're well under the uh, cable. There we are, right. And now, lift it up, swing it out, and yeah, it's completely the wrong way around now, which is very, very annoying. We'll have to try and push it down the mountain, I think, and uh, see if we can get it onto this pile that we've got here, like so. Right, and cut. Hopefully, it won't lose grip on it this time. Nope, we're all good. So, uh, yeah, that has got the rest of those three trees done. And we do need, I think, at this point, to find a better way of doing this. Because we're getting further away, we're getting more stumps up here, and I think that means we need a new piece of equipment. Uh, let's get this back up here, though. And while the Unimog boogies away, uh, we can get these loaded up. What I'm going to try and do is position this over here. Let it stop swinging this time. Let's see if we can't. Then get it to drop down here. Oh, it's the only issue I have is if I stand too close to the actual uh, container, then it um, doesn't let me. That's the issue I have is that it gets that it takes one of them and then the other three just uh get missed but if i was to take this then and uh do that i think we can basically just push these up against it nope that isn't gonna work ah oh, yeah this it kind of need to get the ends of all of them in at the same time or, uh, or it doesn't work. It's great to get the first one in, but the rest just uh, don't go in easy. And you've got to work it a little bit with this. It's a nice idea, but unless I could get this on its end, I don't think it's an idea that would work. Ooh, and now I'm just lifting that. That might work to my advantage. Yeah, wrong, wrong, wrong length. And down grab and up and that's got that one in yeah i think we are uh, laying them down on the ground in front of it and lifting them up with this is the easiest way to do it because we don't then rely on them all falling into the same place uh it's a little bit more time consuming and a little bit more uh requirements on our equipment side of things uh, but it is going to work out better for us in the long run. I think we need one more set of these to uh, actually finish this off. So I'm going to grab these two here. We don't need a huge amount. So uh, grab that one, grab that one, and lift it up. And then that can head back down to the bottom we'll send that back down there 
So if I managed to get it to do what I wanted to do, which is basically swing the ends of these into the container. Let's see if we can do it again. Of course, I didn't do it on camera last time. Like that. There we go. That's exactly what I want to do. That's exactly how I want to load this up. And that's 21,700 liters. So that is that completed. Fantastic. That means we don't need to use the wheel loader um, if we can just get the swing right on the uh, uh, swing right on the uh, logs. I'm um, very, very happy with that. That is uh, absolutely brilliant. Now, I have just checked something. And of course, the, sh the for sale gods, the shop gods have done something which is both annoying and awesome at the same time. Uh, and uh, and I can't ignore it. Uh, after having said everything about the little Kubota uh, skid steer and wanting something up the top that we can work with to move logs about and, uh, and not have to drag things about, whoa, drag things about with our, that's not good. There we are. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. That's not good at all. Um, and drag things about with our uh, skids, uh, with our uh, excavator. Uh, we have got an alternative. I cannot. I need a bigger wheel loader to do this. 21 tons is too much for this wheel loader. And I'm going to have to very carefully try and get it onto the back of this trailer. Don't know how we're going to do the second one then. Right, there we go. Up it goes. Yeah. And on. That is not ideal at all. I should reposition that, I think. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. So, this has turned into being a little bit trickier now. Um, but we do need to do the second one. Um, but as I say, yeah, the sail gods have picked or uh, have given us something and uh, i think we can't ignore it we are gonna have to pick it up get that off there and put it underneath our rope yeah this wheel loader is great but uh, we now need to find a way to pick those up let me show you what I'm yammering on about. In the sales, this has come up. Uh, it is a Libra 6, uh, 622 uh, Litronic. Um, it'd be perfect for what we want. Uh, we've got various main colors. Uh, I'm thinking actually that maybe or that. Actually, I like that. Uh, forestry, yes, most definitely. Um, warning triangle, no. And uh, yeah, we need to go and get a license. Does it, where does it have a license plate? I don't think it has a license plate, actually. I can't see one on here, so I'll set that to... It says back only, but I think with the forestry setup, you don't actually get it. Oh, there it is, right at the top up there. And yes, so we can put that on. Um, and uh, and and do that. So uh, I think this is going to be where we have to spend a bit of money. Um, how many hours does it have on it? Uh, it's only got 12 and a half hours on it. It is fairly worn down. So uh, yeah, I'm going to buy that. I know it's spending a big amount of money that we're trying to save up, uh, but I think we need something to be able to move all the logs and everything up the top more easily uh so i'm going to put the black rims on the bottom and uh yeah let's go find someone from the patron to put on the license plate congratulations to gareth you have been picked at random from the producer level patrons and your name is going on the number plate so uh hidden just up the back there somewhere and uh yeah let's get this purchased so buy that Yes, 32,000. Wow. Always something that comes along. Speaking of which, 
Uh, we don't have the money for that. But that, that Rotney uh, Tree Harvester, that's pretty good as well. So uh, what we also need to do for that, and uh, of course, we, we need a couple of bits now. I think that comes under front loaders. Actually, that comes under wheel loaders, I think. Uh, yes, there we go. Um, yeah, there we are. So uh, we're going to grab the manure fork. The manure fork is actually also a uh, tree, uh, tree grabber. So we can uh, grab that. I think the matte black looks fairly good. Uh, actually, uh, let's not do that. Let's go for it in the yellow and not cost anything extra. So we're going to buy that and also want to buy uh, for that uh, one of these, a forestry mulcher M422. Uh, that's 6,000. So we are going to have to lease that uh, with the forestry bit on the front. So lease that as well. So that will cost us 67 per day. And we'll go pick up all of that in a moment. Uh, I want to get rid of this, I think. Do we own that? Or have we leased that? Let's have a look. Uh, forestry equipment. No, we haven't leased that. So we can return it, in fact. Um, where are we? Mulchers. Or actually, forestry equipment, maybe. Nope. Ah, yes, we have leased it. I'm looking all over the place for it. Yeah, this is leased. So this needs to be returned as well, I think. Uh, we're not going to be using this uh, mulcher anymore for uh, much of anything, to be honest. So return that. Yes, we don't need that anymore. And I now need to find uh, something flat enough, which isn't this trailer, to go and grab all that. I don't know if this is going to work on the back of our truck but we will give it a go so once again today it seems the used equipment has come up trumps for us and uh, given us stuff we really need it's very odd we haven't had this much of uh, a, a, this kind of luck for uh, quite a while so uh, i'm quite happy that uh, we are getting this oh wow this does look well used but this is going to be an absolute game changer as far as getting stuff uh, efficiently loaded up up the top. Look at the size of this thing, though. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping this all works on here. Because if it doesn't, uh, it's, <laughs> it's going to be quite horrible to get this back. So we'll tip that off onto our brand new flatbed. Not the first thing I thought this flatbed was going to be carrying. And then we'll get the mulcher onto the back of here and load it up. Why is that not connecting? Yeah, it, it should go on the front. So that's why it needs to be connected up manually. That's really cool. But now I've got a very slow uh, piece of kit for some reason. This is never going to fit on this trailer. Nope, it isn't. So, looks like we're heading down the road with this. And uh, what I'm going to do then... Because it's, it's metal on the road. That's not good. Uh, what I'm going to do is put that down. Uh, we will put the mulcher on the trailer. Strap that down. Uh, and then we'll take this back up. It's got a number plate. So, it does seem to be able to go on the road. Uh, but uh, we need to drive it back ourselves and uh, and get that going. So, there we go. Uh, that into there. Oh, no, it will be into there in a moment. Yeah, get that better onto there. Like so. Disconnect and disconnect. And then strap it down. And this lot can head back up the road and head back up to our farm uh, or head back up to our logging operation. So, yeah, we are going to be using this piece of kit next time to uh, hopefully make things a little bit more efficient and fill up that second container. We're very much going to be continuing what we were doing last time and uh, getting our second container filled. 
First, though, I want to do a bit of clearing up around here, make things a little bit easier for us to do. So uh, we're going to be getting the mulcher out on this uh, and trying to get rid of some tree stumps first. Wow, this thing is really harsh. Uh, but it does get rid of tree stumps pretty quickly. Uh, it also doesn't need to be very close to the ground to, uh, to do stuff to the ground. So uh, we need to watch that, I think. And, uh, and maybe only drop it down when we need to. Um, I do like that we've got this and uh, and that we're now moving forwards up here to, to sort of clear things out a bit easier. This should also allow me to clear out a few bushes and things. So we can come along here and just clear the area a little bit uh, before we do some replanting later on uh, to get everything uh, back to, uh, well, back with a load of trees growing up here. We will come back up here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the only thing that this can't do that having the uh, little Kubota would have allowed us to do uh, is having the... Uh, is getting uh, rid of things like the rocks up here. I'm not too worried about that at the moment, but we, uh, we will need to do that eventually, I think. If we come up around here, I've just seen one behind me. We have got so many stumps kicking around up here that need getting rid of now. Uh, but this is uh, this is very good at that and should clear them. Uh, also, I found a couple of trees have felled and not got yet. So uh, we're going to try those first with our new setup. Yeah, look at that. This is really efficient, this piece of kit. Um, I can't believe it's classed as a wheel loader, um, which is quite something. Uh, I thought it was going to be slightly smaller than that, maybe a front loader or something like that. But nope, this is a wheel loader and, uh, and it's got the oomph behind it to match, uh, which is great because that makes it even better than what I was looking to run up here before. And uh, yeah, we can grind the stumps and get working on here really really well with this now i think our whole efficiency up here is going to be vastly improved because we picked this up So playing around with this a little bit on here the way to get it to take out stumps without marking the ground uh, is just to do that uh, it doesn't give off a whole lot of uh, wood chips when it does it but it does allow you to, to sort of go round and not mark ground so much. I see another one around here somewhere. Uh, can't see it anymore. Um, yeah, so I've cleared off most of the stumps that we've had from our last couple of rounds of cutting. So time, I think, to go and see if we can process some of the trees that we've got kicking around. And, uh, and then use the log grab we've got to get as many of them back to our yarder as possible. So the first one is through here somewhere where I saw it. We're still going for the lodgepole pines um, because there are more of them over here. Right, so what I'm going to do is try to get this to go forwards. What are you stuck on? Shouldn't be stuck on anything, to be honest. Yeah, there we go. Uh, over the rocks. Out with that. And turn our head up. And we're going to push that out and down. Like that. And grab it. And then we are going to pull it back a little bit. Because I want to uh, get it the other side of these rocks. But... Uh, we'll then just put it into this area to the left. With any luck. And it should work fairly well for us. Yeah, this is where the rocks kind of get in our way of the stuff. Bring it in. Uh, bring it up and in. Bring it up. Yep. And should be able to get it to the side of my excavator. Cut it. Create a nice little pile of wood over here it lands properly and then we will be able after that to come in with our new uh, lever and pick it all up and take it over to load it up onto the yarder 
So I've switched the front attachment over on this now. And I'm going to come in here. See if A, we can first move this log around. So we'll move that around like that. And then, yeah, we should be able to get under all of this and get it picked up and taken over to the yarder. So let's push this in and can we get it under? Same method we have for the other one. Just rock it under and eventually it'll grab a load and then we can pick it up. And it's only grabbed one. This will take longer if all I can get is one at a time. So uh, yeah, we need to try and make sure we can increase that number. There we go. I think that's got a load. Oh, we're knocking it off with the header from our excavator. I might have to push it up to the excavator then in order to grab it and then try and carefully shift it out from under it. Yeah, I think the excavator needs to move and then that will be made easier uh, of a job in transporting these back to the yard. Doesn't need to be the easiest uh, or the cleanest uh, stack that we grab here. It's, it's going to fit in here fairly easily. And uh, yeah, fit onto the pile fairly easily. Uh, and uh, yeah, it only has to last until we reach this pile. So uh, I'm not too worried about it. But uh, it is uh, it's really much more efficient, much easier way of doing it. Yes, we're having to make more journeys between our uh, where we are cutting and, uh, and, and where we are. But the amount of times I've had issues trying to get stuff back, trying to get a big tree back, uh, and especially as we get further away from the yarder, it's going to become more of an issue do that so uh, I'm quite happy to have it this way and move things uh, like this a few more trips back and forward uh, is far less frustrating uh, overall to do it this way and uh, yeah we'll be able to replant this and get a whole load of uh, lodgepole pines up here I think uh, once we've uh, done a whole load of cutting. Now, ones down the bottom are getting taller and taller all the time. So eventually, we're not going to have to be up here to do this. Uh, and uh, we will uh, be able to use this around the back to, to just bring stuff and load it straight up. Right, we need some more trees. So I am going to take this one. See if we can take four at this point. Uh, so that's one. We'll have this one as well. And then we will also go for this one, I think. Yeah. Let's take it lower, get as long a length as we can. And one more. Uh, so we'll go with this one. Yeah, a whole clump of trees together. We can then create a nice pile with our excavator and uh, and then come in and uh, pick them up with our other bit. Uh, I am going to take this tree out as well. Not very big. Uh, it's only 11.6 meters. In fact, the cut version is 10 meters. Uh, but it will uh, it will do the job. And uh, it will clear the way for us a little bit as well. So back this off. And then we'll get the excavator into that area. And start getting them uh, cleared and cut. So yeah, in. And uh, just see if we can line it up. Grab it, drag it back. Uh, and actually that's going to drag another tree back for us as well. And got a line just over here or a pile that we're making just over here and dragging it just far enough back to get it onto that pile uh, should be enough to uh, straighten it out for it as well which is great and we're back on to the kind of clearing we were doing early on in this uh, on this map where we're, we're getting a nice pile together and, uh, and we're making things easier for ourselves 
rather than what we've been doing recently, which has just been making things so much harder by uh, trying to drag trees all over the place. Let's lift that up. And down again. And grab it. Go on. There we are. And then in this round, and you can see already as we're dragging back, it's going backwards and forwards. We are uh, just putting it onto the same pile for us to pick up with our tracked wheel loader. Perfect. Gonna make things so much easier. Last tree and onto the pile. And this is this is kind of how I want to work. Make it much easier on myself, not having to move this all the way back all the time. Uh, we'll have to come through here and remove these stumps now. Because of course they're in our way. Um, and I think we should be able to get in here and grab a whole load of these. And all of the same thing. And because we've got uh, three, four trees here. Uh, this should be enough for us to go down and, uh, and try and swing them into the current uh, or into the yellow uh, container. Uh, something actually happened at the end of the previous day. Uh, the container warehouse at the moment has a great demand on, but it looks like it's ended actually. It is at 1,280, which is more than anywhere else. So uh, yeah, this is this is actually going to be worth a lot uh, from these. Uh, we want to get these down and delivered as quickly as we can um, because we want to take advantage of a good high price, uh, which at the moment is sitting there, but uh, doesn't look like it's going to be sitting there for long. And yeah, this is this. The other nice thing about this is we have far more control over how these stacks are underneath the yarder. So it's going to make them much, much easier to connect up to and uh, and get transported down to the bottom end of the uh, of it and uh, and loaded into the container as a result doesn't close up easy i think that's because oh yeah we have got something trapped in the jaw at the top this one is going to be a little bit less stable than the previous ones but as i said it doesn't matter so much because all we need to do is get them around here and get them to the point where we can load them up on to the yarder and even that one falling down there a little bit is not a problem such an amazing view from up here i really really love it it's uh, it's great look being able to look down towards my uh, my logging camp and see everything down there is uh, is brilliant and uh, yeah we can see the yellow container just standing out ready to be filled uh, we've got one more load of logs here that need picking up and putting in so uh, we will swing around this tree. Uh, try and get this one that is uh, in the wrong place swung into the pile like that and then there are only three left here so can I get all three of them onto my grab let's try this is actually classed as a manure fork but every other time I've seen something like this it's been a log grab I think if we're having trouble because of the tree in front of us yeah, let's see if we can go to the side of it a little bit. There is some space to do that. And, uh, yeah, go up at this end. Try and get them instead. Underneath. One more. Come on. And, oh no, it's really pushed the top of that back. Yeah, it doesn't like it. It really doesn't like it. Open up. Come on, get in there. Get that last log. Okay. I'm going to have to come back and get that last log separately. Because it will not go in to this jaw here. There's something stopping it. Okay. Trying it again. And this time we just knocked it again into the tree. I'm going to try and knock it out of the way, I think. People have told me they like to see it when I, I struggle with some of the bits like this. So I'm, uh, I'm not adverse to just showing the struggle. The struggle is real. 
and uh, yeah, there we go. That should be available to us now to easily get under and grab. We'll spin it around. I love the maneuverability of this. This is a really maneuverable little piece of kit. And we should be able... Oh, come on. I want both pieces. Give me both. Right. Okay, now I'm losing one piece. Right. Up here, lift up. We'll use the very tip of it to drag these back and out. Like that. And then the bigger one... We can definitely get that onto uh, the grab. If I don't put it on top of it, back it up and on. there we go. So that is all but on the grab. And then what we do is come and get this little bit here, turn it around, and we'll stick that in there as well. Hurry the lot back. There we go. And that in there. Close that up grab it all and yeah there we go that will now get onto the pile and we can start transferring it back down to our logging camp that i think has to be the cleanest pile we've had up here in a while um it's not a great pile but it is uh it is a clean pile let's get our uh yarder back up here and once again little boogie has started on our uh, on our unimog that is just a little bit mad right i'm gonna try and pull them off the top from this end uh hopefully that will disrupt the pile the least so let's go there uh, wanted to get these to swing the best there can I get this one? No. Uh, so we will take that one if I can. Well, there you are. Uh, nope. Too much weight. Yeah. We've hit the maximum weight. So drag it off. Pull it up. And send it down to the bottom. Let's see if we can swing these into our yellow container. I have the container open already. Going to start bringing it down. Oh, that's got quite a wide swing on it. Okay, it's going in roughly the right direction. Here we go. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm getting better at this. That's fantastic. I think the next upgrade for this is probably going to be the better yarder. It's uh, it's easier to do. Um, I've held off doing it at the moment because I don't think we overly need it. Wow, those are already at full uh, full weight, so we'll pull that out. Uh, yeah, I don't think we overly need it. We're, we're not going to be working up here too much longer. We're waiting for our tr our own tree farm to grow up. And then we'll uh, we'll be replanting that. But once we get back up here, I think I think we will. I think we are definitely going to need a, uh, a bigger yard up here. It should be just about our halfway point. Oh, I think our, I think the whole thing has moved a little bit. Is there? Yeah, they're going off to the side at the moment. Oh, miss. <laughs> so what I've been doing is uh, rehooking it up and uh, and lifting it up again when they miss. And I think that's part of the reason why. We now have this issue. Lift it up a bit more. Because you can see my line is a little bit off. So what I'm going to do is just start this up. And we'll move the container just a smidge to uh, towards me here. 
so that uh, we can make sure that we're in the right place. Uh, where are we? Yeah. Let's straighten this up a little bit. And then I, I can see exactly where the middle point should be based on where that log is. So if I leave it there, that hopefully is going to make things easier on us. So up a little bit. And then other way. And in. Yeah, perfect. I'm really pleased. I've got the swing for this down fairly well at this point. It's uh, pretty good. Bring it down. Have to go back a little bit. And down. One more out. And then down. And in it goes. It's just brilliant. So we're at 15,000 uh, 15, litres. Uh, we need to get a, another 6,000 litres into here. And up at the top here, yeah, we've got more than enough to fill this up, uh, which is great. Very good news. Uh, means that I should be able to get this all done today. We'll make the money today. We're already back up to 26,759. Productions wise, uh, we still got some wood in our wood turner, so that's still bringing stuff in. And yep, we uh, we could probably do next time actually with going and filling up our oil and ore trailer and making sure that that keeps coming. So uh, all in all, this is uh, pretty good, to be honest. Oh no, maximum weight. I don't think we can hook on another small one can we will that do nope that is the maximum weight so uh, just those two this time i think we've either we've either got one or two more of these that over this way yeah there we go and there uh, will that one go as well oh, there all three of those will go yeah this might be enough to finish it uh those are quite weighty those So let's see how well they go in and uh, and how well this works i'm uh, uh this this hopefully is going to bring us in a decent amount of money i'm uh, i'm very much hoping six meter lengths are easy for us to deal with here and having a six meter length that uh, we can then get sold on all in a wrong length but that is full so uh yeah as i thought that was our last load so now we just need to try and wobble this carefully back onto our trailer uh we know from last time that we need more weight i, I think i need to find a weight for this somebody did send me a wheel load of weight so uh yeah i do need to to get that um and uh, and sort it out because you can see immediately as soon as i try and lift this at all we end up with a problem well forwards just need to get it high enough to get it on here the sound of scraping metal on the floor and then trying to get it into a small space where there's only just enough room to put this that is quite exceptional come on uh, uh, okay eventually got it on here just need to push it up and on and there we go right yeah i think next time the way to do this is definitely gonna be to uh to load it on the trailer 
get it loaded up on there and uh, and probably take the back one off load the front one then put the back one on and then load the back one is going to be the easiest way to do that um either that or i need to find the weights for the back of this which uh yeah somebody has sent me some over so i need to go and find those and hopefully that will work right time to head off down to the container warehouse and get uh these offloaded and see how much money we'll make uh which hopefully is going to be a good amount uh oh yeah and then when we come back this trailer needs a good repair because at the moment it's deep into the orange across the wooden bridge and out this way need to go wide of that tree there uh yeah this road here this runs parallel to the main road uh, but brings me out up the top near the container house or the container warehouse which is very useful uh, and allows me to loop back in round to the sawmill so let's bring this down here any cars coming no so we can go straight out onto the road and then the thing we need to check for is any trains coming no i think we're clear on the trains good with any luck it won't suddenly appear while we're still turning into here and then we just bring our containers around to here there's one there's two sixty-two thousand uh five uh sixty-three thousand roughly uh by the looks of things uh that's not bad at all actually takes us up to ninety-two thousand we could now buy the shingle factory if we wanted or we could place our uh we could actually place the uh, spinnery so we might start looking at that actually and see if we can get that in so let's bring the trailer back together and head back to the farm i think in fact no if we do place the spinnery which is probably a good time to start looking at that because we want to be creating a whole load of stuff we are going to build it down here and there's a couple of places down here that would be really good to build that and i think down by the river is probably a fairly good choice there's a nice little patch of ground just here in amongst these trees i'm gonna pull over and yeah the first thing we need to build of our new structures is the spinnery down by the river road here so if we have a look in productions where's uh carpentry dairy what does the carpentry output uh oh outputs furniture for 60,000. Wow, we could actually do that. Although it doesn't put out specific furniture. Spinnery, there we go. For 60,000. Wow, that's actually fairly huge. And... Because that's one spinnery. I think we had a second one in here as well. Um, yeah, there's a second spinnery. That might be a better choice down here. And... It's going to eat into the ground a little bit, but uh, it should be fairly good. Otherwise, how much is it going to be? Oh, wow. That's going to lift the ground up a fair whack. So let's, yeah. 65,000 that's going to cost to, pay, uh, to place there. And is going to eat fairly deeply into that hillside so let's put it somewhere that doesn't overlap about there i think is pretty good so uh, now we just need to uh, even out this ground here uh, make this uh, work well with it uh, but otherwise yeah i'm quite happy that it, it digs into the side here uh, trees don't seem to be too unhappy with it just needs a little bit of work to smooth things out. So let's get that done. I think the way to do this actually is this. So our target, we have a look at this. We want to set target of the slope. 
and then we want to set the rest of the slope and yeah and then it just sort of brings it up to it which is really good i i quite like that and means that we get a nice uh evening out of all the slope and everything uh onto here again if we target that corner and start from here you can see that it, it just brings it all up to it which is great yeah like that and then oh wow okay we're gonna have to smooth this out a bit i think in fact we're gonna have to smooth this out a lot because that is not where i want it to be Right, let's smooth it then. I'm going to enlarge that and just smooth all of this out. It won't take too much money to do this, I don't think. It's more the stuff at the other side. There we go. Right, I think that's got it. Let's have a look. So we've got a fairly flat road over here uh, and then it sort of goes down here. Yep, that's, uh, that works for me. Uh, we could lift it up at this side a little bit, but uh, I think that's all right. It's not a huge way it goes down there. And we've got our spinnery in, which is fantastic because that means we can start delivering a whole load of uh, wool there as we need to. And that will get the next stage of the ship going as well, um, which is fantastic news too. Next up... We're going to need to buy uh, another production facility and get that moving. Um, but for now, I'm quite happy with that. I think, though, we're probably going to be doing some more wood. And, yeah, I'm not sure containers are the way to go next time. I think we'll probably deliver some direct wood down to somewhere like uh, maybe the sawmill or even our wood turner. Uh, just to try and get some extra cash uh, squeezed out of it. There is one last job I want to do today, and that is to pop down to our shipyard. I'm fairly certain that it will have hit the next stage. Um, it's It's been a day or so since we went and had a look at this, and as a result, I'm pretty sure that there... Uh, it should have finished this stage uh, if it has oh wow look at that yes it has the boat is outside we are getting so close to the launch of this now uh, it just needs a sail and uh and bits so uh required for next steps we need at least one pallet of wooden beams and we need 3600 liters of fabric you know what that means we need to head back to the farm and i think we need to get a few more sheep because uh 3600 liters of fabric uh well that's gonna take quite a bit of wool so basically we need to up our uh wool production because at the moment we've only got how many liters uh 844 liters so in our production to make fabric from wool it takes two wool to one fabric so for we're going to need 7000 liters of fabric to do that and uh, and that is a way off yet so i'm going to head over here how many more sheep can we add to this pen uh we can add five more sheep to this pen uh we've got all welsh uh black welsh mountain sheep so i am going to i think all of our ones in here how old are our ones in here uh yeah these are these are all 12 month olds so i am gonna add yeah five more eight month olds uh that is not going to cost us a huge amount of money uh it's only going to cost us 2694 so we'll buy those max out our sheep pen and uh yeah hopefully get the uh the wall going a little bit faster as i said we need over seven thousand liters of wool to do this so uh, it's going to be a little while before our sheep are have produced enough 
But as long as they keep producing, we are going to have a ship we can launch. I kind of wish I'd started the sheep earlier now, knowing this. We're heading back to our main logging yard because our tree farm is ready to harvest. Um, all of our trees in there are up to 36 and 36.6 uh, meters. So uh, plan is to head down there and start getting those cut. Um, the great thing about that is we can start taking that straight over to the sawmill, uh, producing everything from the sawmill again and making money off those. So I think that's what we're going to do. That's where we're we're headed with this, and uh, and hopefully that's going to very quickly get us the money we need to buy the last three production facilities we need to get the roller coaster done however to get our ship done we're going to need uh, quite a bit of wool uh we need 4,000 liters of fabric uh we currently have 1,000 liters just over 1,000 liters of wool as you can see there uh it is uh, 2,000 litres of wool for every 1,000 litres of fabric. So we need another uh, just under 7,000 litres of wool from our sheep. We are at full capacity in the sheep pen. So uh, there's not much we can do uh, to increase the speed other than just wait and process what we can. So we'll be loading up wool on a fairly regular basis and getting that done. Um, but yeah, look here uh 30 uh 36.3 meters are uh, all of the trees that, that we planted several months ago uh we have so much wood here we can now harvest uh with with really great ease uh in order to uh to make a load of money so uh, that's why we bought this down here we're gonna cut a few of these trees uh, i think we want to cut six trees and see if we can get them uh, loaded up fairly quickly so 69 uh, plus 90 is 59 so i want to take it at about that angle there let's take it as low as we possibly can and that way we'll be able to keep as much length on these as possible 36 uh, meters should give us if we take it low enough um a full six logs so uh, i want to try and do that so if we try and put these two between or this between these two trees that's 76 75 degrees so uh, 165 we want to make that full at there there should do it is this gonna fall between these two very close trees I'm hoping so, because that's going to make our life easier if it does. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Perfectly between those two. That is what you call a goal. Uh, right. Um, this one here, we want to go at 83. So that's 173. And this is the easiest way to get trees to go exactly where you want. 90 degrees. Cut them 90 degrees from where you want them to fall as flat as you can with the chainsaw and you will uh, you'll get a perfectly falling tree every time but that one fell perfectly between those two as well and the advantage of getting to fall down like this is that's going to guide the tree as we're cutting it as well so it's going to make it a lot easier right this one here i want at 92 degrees so a that would be 82 about there-ish and cut that that's our fourth tree i think yep straight down there and yeah trying to get it to miss other trees is the important thing uh, otherwise they get hung up on them and get really difficult to deal with then i think uh between there yeah so that is 87 so uh, we want 77 degree cut at that point. And lastly, then we want one more tree, which is this one. Ah, oh, yeah, here we are. We now have an issue. I'm going to have to get the wheel loader in here and try and dislodge that from up there. But try and pick this tree up with, uh, with this. 
uh, it's just going to cause issues for the excavator. So I've got two options, really. I come in here with the wheel loader and try and dislodge the top. Or we take this tree earlier than I'm, I was planning. Which I don't really want to do. It's, it could cause me a lot of issues. And I could have a tree fall on my head, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get the wheel loader in here to dislodge that. Um, alternatively, if I can... How long is this? 34.6. Okay, so if I cut this, this might get it to slide out of place. Uh, nope, not quite. Ah, uh, yeah, it's annoying. It's stuck on the top of this stump and just trying to get the whole thing to slide out like that. No, it's not enough. We'll have to uh, we'll have to come in and dislodge it. And uh, then final one here. We're going to send that at this direction. That is 93. So that will be 83 we want to cut that at. And through there like so. Yeah, there we go. Right, that's got that one. And that's had a clear fall as well. Uh, mustn't lose that one. So, uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. Uh, there's that six trees that we've cut. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So, let's uh, see if we can get the... Well, we'll head up here to get the first ones cut. And then what we'll do is uh, just bring the wheel loader in behind to try and dislodge that. We're, of course, going to have to get our other wheel loader back down from up the top. And uh, that is because... Uh, it currently is in uh, a position... Well, it's it's the only thing we have that has a stump grinder on it at the moment. Uh, I want to turn that slightly around like that. Because what I'm going to do, turn the top. Uh, we'll send this out. Open it up. Uh, let's go into uh, this mode here. I find it really easy, actually, to uh, position things from in cab like this yeah that's about as far as we go and all right and then let's turn the head and hopefully it will pick up no not quite okay come on a little bit further all right okay forward with this turn until we get to a position where it will actually pick it like that and once we've done that, what we can do is just back up a bit. Uh, bring this round. Coming in as we do. We're guiding on the tree a little bit. We want to send it to the other side of our excavator. And create a nice pile of wood just over there. And if we lift this up a little bit, we won't collide with any of the logs. And if we can keep these nice and straight here. And some nice easy piles. Uh, when we come along with the wheel loader in a bit to load up our logging trailer, uh, it's going to make our lives so much easier. And uh, yeah, that is exactly how I'm looking to do all of this. So we'll go forward a little bit. Uh, we know we can take this out, round, down, and grab it like that. Then this one, of course, is being guided by those two trees a little bit better. And then through, and second cut. And this is why I wanted to create this logging tree, or uh, this tree farm here. Because it's just going to make things so much easier. Even if I didn't lift this up high enough not to push that first log out of the way, unfortunately. But otherwise, we've got a fairly nice pile here. Now, before I go any further, I want to try and dislodge this tree that's stuck. So, careful, because I know I've got another one in there. Let's see if we can get under this. It seems to want to move, so that's good news. Yeah, there we go. Just dislodge it out of the branches. And uh, nice and safely get out of the way. We'll park this over here, because we're going to be using this in a minute. And I'm going to block this roadway with the trailer when we do. So uh, I don't want to be in a position where I can't actually uh, get my wheel loader in here. And then come over here. 
I want to come into here and get the next one. Yeah, this is this is going to be a really nice way for us to work. Lots of trouble working up on the hillside. Uh, lots of uh, issues with it just being really difficult to, to get wood to the yarder. This is uh, making things so much easier. I don't know why it's not picking that up, though. There we go. Right. And swing it out. Try and get it as far as the others. Lift it up. And time for another pile. Yeah, this is this is like it was when we were down here originally working in this. Creating nice piles of wood that are easy to uh, get onto the trailer and, uh, and get up. And we're now working in a single type of wood as well, uh, which is which is good for us too. And oh, I am get, still getting used to using a wheel with this excavator a bit. It is uh, quite, <laughs> it's not really how they're designed to be used. Um, it has given me a new appreciation though for how the baler works in uh, the uh, in the DLC. That self-propelled baler uh, is uh, now I know exactly how I should be using it in the same way as I use an excavator. Just don't Go forwards or backwards separate to trying to turn. Don't try and turn and immediately go forwards or backwards. It doesn't work on the excavator. It does not work on that baler either. Uh, and so, yeah, it's uh, it's really, really good practice for that. Because I think we're going to be using that on Attingham in the near future. Um, I want to try and find a contract, a big silage baling contract on that series. So that we can see if we can earn the money to get uh, field 15. Um, but uh, it is going to require that baler. And that baler, of course, as we've discovered before, can be quite fun to use. Our final log, it's going to come right out. Well, actually, no, I can get it on the same pile as the uh, previous one. So let's lift that up. And send that over there. And that should actually, hopefully, straighten them out as they fall. Yeah. Makes it easier a little bit. Nice big pile to end us on. Although it is turning. That's all right. We're, we're in a position where we can, uh, can clear these up and straighten them out. So what I'll do now is swing this round. Swing our um, excavator round. And we're done. Uh, one other advantage, of course, is of cutting these as low as I possibly can is that it, my excavator is less likely to get caught on them. So that just works out so much better for me. How much hay do our sheep have? Still a two and a half thousand liters in this bale. Um, so happily creating wool still. Uh, we have... 94 liters here so yeah it is just over a thousand liters so far um and with eight thousand liters to go in total that's uh, quite a lot of wool they are gonna need to create right let's get this out and into position and then we can start loading it up with some wood truck in place let's jump out of here and jump into here uh, with our very big log grab now and hopefully these can be kept fairly straight as well if we're lucky i don't know how likely that is uh, and how many we can get at each time we're gonna try and get a nice big amount though with each grab actually you know what that is not a bad first grab and this is, yeah, this is what I've been working towards. Having a good logging area where we can create our own tree farm, set things up and uh, produce wood that we're able to then just continually regenerate and, uh, and, and rework and earn us money. And yeah, we've got so many trees here. We planted just a full pallet of trees around the back here. And uh, yeah, we can just go in, harvest them, 
and grab what we want, which is absolutely great. Okay, let's grab these two. I don't want that end one. Oh, no. Ah. If I could grab that one, or that other one, that would be great. But I think that's going to be too much work. Trying to keep them as even as possible. And dropping one now. Oh, yeah. I think six trees should be enough to get us fairly full trailer. I think in the past we've had eight trees, but I don't know if that's been at the full 36 meters. So uh, we'll see how uh, how well these six trees fill this trailer. Already, that's quite a way up there. So I think we've got fairly high on this side here. Um, we can extend the spikes at the top, and I think I do want to do that, but... I'm just going to move the trailer forward a bit first so that we can do the back. Also, I think I might try and come around the other side with the wheel loader and uh, just reposition these before I do the next bit. Uh, and opening, uh, pulling the trailer forward will give me enough space to do that. Uh, can I lift them off and do it? Because they really kind of need to go forwards rather than be that far back. This is where stuff starts going a little bit to pot, if you're not careful. But, uh, yeah, we're doing all right. Wow, it doesn't want to go between those two spikes. I kind of wish it would. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it won't. So that's annoying. I'll have to, uh, to work on that a little bit more. Pulled them both off and managed to uh, realign them a little bit. And they should just fit into this space here, I think. Yep, there we go. Nicely done. Right, that's much cleaner. Let's get the rest of this in. And yeah, it looks like six trees is easily going to be enough to fill this trailer today, which is uh, actually really reassuring news. Like everything with Farm Sim, practice makes perfect. And this is uh, loading logs with this is no exception. I have definitely improved. I say this every time I'm loading logs in uh, in this series, but I have definitely improved my logging skills and uh, and and my skills with this piece of equipment, especially uh, in this series, just by forcing myself to actually use it and uh, and 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 you know do it properly uh, has caused me to be better with it. And I'm picking up between three and six logs with every lot that I collect, uh, which is speeding things up no end. And I think this is probably the series that I've ended up using the most larger equipment in for a while. Uh, I, it's it's just something that's that's happened with what's been available in the shop and uh, and how we've been able to do. I think I would quite like to replace this with the big Volvo one at some point. Uh, I think with the amount of work we're doing on here and how well uh, having a wheel loader has worked for us uh, has has gone, um, especially of this size, having a bigger one is going to be really useful uh, later on. At the moment, we, uh, we're doing okay with this class one. It's working well for us. I'd really like one with a forestry cage or something on it. Oh, I don't think the base game or the the Volvo ones that come with the DLC have that uh, it would be nice uh, of course our, our new one our Lieber, our tracked one uh, does uh, and we've got the forestry set up on that but then that as well we are very much trying to use uh, up the mountain and to take stuff to the yard whereas this one is, is much more for keeping at the logging camp now and uh, and, and using that way can I tease these into position? I don't want to do it too much because all I'm going to do is make logs fly. I could do with, though, that log not being quite as high up as it is. Let's see if we can't uh, pull that into position there. Right, there we go. And then that can be pushed at that end. Yeah, it's not, it's not sitting on there great. I think we might try and pull that off. So let's 
Uh, come on to here. Oh, come on. Yeah, get under it. Get under it. There we go. That's got it. Lift that up. And position that better on our trailer. Make it a little bit more even. And it's moving about in my uh, in the claw a bit. But, uh, yeah, there we go. That is much better positioned. Fantastic. Right, and I think at this point, we can extend the spikes on the trailer. So up those go. And we've got enough space for the rest of the logs that we've got. Last of the logs onto the back. Uh, these should finish this off, I think. I don't really... Yeah, it's getting harder to get logs on the back now. So we'll strap the rear ones down. Now that that's done. And we can now back up our truck. I'm amazed. This is the piece of kit we've had the longest on here. And uh, it is certainly not the piece of kit with the most hours on it. Uh, the um, this this class has quite a lot of hours on it now. What forty eight hours? It's coming up to fifty. I mean, most of the stuff we have bought is uh, second hand, so it's gonna have hours on it. Um, but yeah, this has fifty odd hours on it. This has let's turn the lights off. Uh, Sixteen. Um, our tractor here that has ten. The JCB has 12. Yeah, I think it's by a long way the class. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of hours on the, the 3500 as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think I think it is this wheel loader that has the most hours on it. We did use it quite extensively early on as well. Right, can we get all of these in one grab? That would be quite epic. Oh, look at that. That is very cool, and I am very happy with that. That is one large collection of... Uh, it's not quite all the logs. There's one log left, and we oh, we have just lost one all at the bottom. And we'll collect up both of those in a moment. But that's not bad. And if I'm careful and get this nice and straight, these will all drop as one onto the top. Oh, no. Lift it up. Getting caught on that. Right, okay. Down. In. Go on. On the top you go. There we are. And then just carefully getting caught on the trailer. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, that is all in there. We just have two last logs to load up. The one that dropped off. Uh, which will quite nicely go into the middle. And uh, because it's a single log, it should be quite easy to pick up. Uh, but that should go in the middle on top here. And then I think we've got space for that last log there as well to go in as well. There is a bit of a bump on the, uh, on the roadway just at the point where we'd look to, um, to, to be unloading stuff. And it unfortunately makes the whole of my wheel loader go down just where I want to uh, be finished with it. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, okay, knock you in. Yeah, there we go. Right, one more piece to get on the top. And then we are done. And we can take this all down to our uh, sawmill. And, and by lunchtime as well. I mean, that's really good. To be this far done and uh, and have a full trailer by lunchtime uh, is brilliant because that makes a massive difference to uh, how long it takes us to earn money. We've got to the sweet spot where it's going to be so much easier for us to earn cash. And yes, the 36.4 or 36.3 meter trees... It only takes six of them to fill up our lorry. Um, and that's great. That is absolutely fantastic. Right, let's park this up here because we'll be using it again later. Uh, but for now, we're going to jump into our truck and head up to the sawmill and get these all unloaded. I think this might be one of the nicest stacking jobs I think I've ever done of logs onto a trailer. 
Uh, apart from the odd one, I think in fact it's only one that is out of place. Everything else is looking pretty good on here. Really quite happy with it. And uh, and it's working very, very well. We've got our, oh yeah, we've got our spinnery in there, of course, that we built last time or the time before. I can't remember which. Uh, but yeah, our recently built spinnery, which we want to start dropping stuff off to. I think I'm going to do it every time we get two pallets of wool. Um, because those will go nicely on the back of our, um, our, of our truck when we do that. Right, before we start this, I'm just going to pop up here. And we want to get the manufacturing working. So everything's turned off at the moment. Um, we want to activate everything and we're going to start doing what we were doing early on in our playthrough here uh, We are going to start loading the train up again and sending stuff off to uh, Off on that to be sold Yeah, already we got logs coming out of this don't go any further into the water Let's undo all of these and start getting these sold there was a great demand recently for the uh, wood chips. And I'm wondering if it's still running. It's not, but the price is going up on everything. Uh, January is the best time for... Oh, wow. Yeah. We don't want to be selling wood chips at the moment. Uh, Rural Farms taking them for 302. But the best time to sell them is January, where they hit nearly 700 per thousand litres. Uh, I think we are in a position, though where we have quite a few sitting about oh yeah there's there's a decent pile of wood chips here at the moment so uh yeah we'll keep building those up uh we'll go and sell those in january and uh, and get a decent price for them i think we've already got a fair amount of long planks and of wood beams in fact what we've got eight lots of the wood beams that's fantastic so uh those are processing well and we just need to finish emptying out this. So let's just jump back in here. Let those drop down. And in a minute, the rest of those will be unloaded. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to head up the hill and start getting our second wheel loader down. I've come up here to get this and realized that actually, we still have some logs up here. Um, we didn't completely fill everything. So what I'm going to do is get this coming back. Like this, this is still doing its jiggle. Um, I want to get the, I uh, want to put the grab for this, I think. Actually, I think we might leave the grab for this up here. Although I might put it on the back of our Unimog here. And then uh, we'll take the stump grinder down. Because I want to clear up today as well. Make it easier for us when we go to cut next time. So, attach to that. Uh, J... Come on, lift it. Uh, bring it back this way, please. Right, and then drop it down. Getting very near to our... Uh, it again. Oh, come on. Right, I've dropped it. And now I can get those... Oh, it's still... It's too heavy for it. Great. Uh, let's grab this one then if we can. Yeah, grab that one. Pick that up and uh, we'll get these down to our logging yard and we can clear these up as well so that uh, this area is finished with. We, we're going to be replanting this area, so I, I don't want anything left up here really that, uh, that we don't need uh, and that might get in our way. We'll bring this down here, see if I can actually lay these down by the road. We'll have the... Uh, we can come and sort them out with the wheel loader in a minute. Uh, right. And drop them. That's impressive. Last three. And we'll just add them to this slightly messy pile down here that we'll, uh, we'll come round with the wheel loader in a bit and fix. And then, yeah, that's everything up the top there. Sorted and done. And drop it. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit of a messy pile, um, but that is everything cleared up from the top. So now I can uh, disable the follow mode. I want to remove the yard of rope. So we'll take that down. 
Uh, and then, oh wow, we, yeah, we really need to uh, to sort this. Uh, it is it is in a very much a need of uh, getting itself uh, refueled. I've forgotten, this, this is the thing, this Yarda does use uh, fuel on this Unimog. Right, can we get that on the back of here with the Yarda? That's going to be tough. Let's see. Let's put it here. Bring it forwards. I don't think the Yarda and... Yeah, and that is going to fit on here. So the alternative is to make a couple of trips with this wheel loader. So let's get this back down to the farm, uh, to our logging yard first. And then I'm going to make a couple of trips with the Yarda and get that back too. While we're bringing this down here, and we've got the log grab on the front. Let's just swing around here. See if we can't line these all up. And, uh, and just make a little pile with them out the way. Oh, with this road, it's a little bit of an angle. But yeah, there we go. Right. Just want to lift them up and get them out the way. Actually, not as easy to work with this, uh, this wheel loader. And it does count as a wheel loader, this. Not as a as a front loader or anything which did surprise the hell out of me um yeah there we go that just moves those out the way there and close that up i'm gonna put this into this shed here i think we'll put this right at the back i know our excavator goes in here but uh, i think we're gonna have to build more sheds because uh, we are definitely out of uh, out of space around here which is quite telling i mean that is uh, that is quite something let's go drive this back up to the top and grab the stump grinder which is what we need next something i found a little bit odd is if you've got this on the front of here and you are uh and it's all connected up and everything this is limited to four miles an hour which is really weird let's just put it on the um uh, on cruise control and yeah you cannot go faster than four miles an hour with this attached to the front uh, also i've noticed driving along the reason why we've been cultivating soil with this is because of that rear one we've got so very much the front one is a stump grinder and the the, the rear one is the uh is the sort of a cultivator so when i'm using this i must use it like this so facing down get rid of the stumps that way and we won't affect the ground we won't be actually cultivating and messing with the ground so uh yeah that's how i'm going to be using this going forward and slowly we've made it round to our logging area into our tree farm and let's turn this on and see if my theory about how i should be using this is right yeah look at that that is uh, that is grinding stumps and only grinding stumps so yeah that is how you use that you uh you tip it forward it's why it has the spikes on when you set it to forestry mode so that you can just use it for stump grinding like this and yeah bye bye stumps when you do fantastic this is all coming together really really nicely and uh we're, we're looking at making a lot of money very quickly now just because we have uh, an easier way to cut and load all of this uh, i love it this is this is all coming together exactly how i hoped it would i think this is our last stump to grind so let's get that ground down and out uh any more around here no i think i think that really is the last one to grind perfect so we'll stop that running we'll park this out the way for now and uh yeah that is a cracking first day on our tree farm could not be happier how that's gone uh we'll get the truck back here and we will look at seeing uh, whether we have anything to sell over the next couple of days. Um, but we, we're going to have some wool to get to our spinnery and things in the next couple of days as well. We are headed up 
to the sawmill we've got a whole load of long wooden planks uh that we can go and uh get converted into pepper pots and uh bowls and get them sold and keep that running because that factory has run out yeah our wood turner is in need of uh of resupply uh so we're going to be doing that today um i also need to uh look at a couple of other bits and pieces we really really want to hit but well, if we hit seventy thousand, uh there is another job we can do we can get the uh one of our factories bought so i think we're going to be looking at doing that today hopefully uh if we can get this turned around now that factory will be uh the shingles factory so that's that's the first one i'm targeting that is worth a hundred and uh sorry that's worth seventy thousand. so we're nine thousand shy of that uh so we should be able to get that with any luck i'd like to park over here because it's fairly flat over this area um so yeah we can do that today uh we should be we get the back out uh, we should be able to do all that. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer before we sell stuff from here. I mean, we've got a lot of uh, wooden planks, uh, but we have lots of space more to do those. We are almost full on the wooden beams. And actually, I'd like to go and drop one of these off down at the shipyard. So we'll probably load one of these up and drop it down the shipyard. And because it's still asking for metal be uh, for wooden beams, even though we, we don't have any um uh even though it's it's saying zero and yes we have nine lots of the long wooden planks here that we can load up so uh we want to get those done uh we are all detached let's head out in our little jcb then and go and get this uh collected up i'm still thinking well i, I still think it'd be a good idea to have something like this down here uh, we don't have anything in the shop today that would work for that. Well, we do. We have a Torion, but it's 60,000. And yeah, I don't want to get a third wheel loader on here, really. I think uh, two with with very different functions uh, is probably enough. I think a smaller version of, uh, of one that we already have is probably not something I'm aiming for. So, uh, yeah plan here is we don't need any more of it. well i don't know if we need any of these actually to construct any of the stuff that we're going to be doing when we have the factories going soon uh i have no idea what we need to put into the factories but we can't do anything until we make some money and the whole idea of putting stuff into here really or, or putting output from here was so that we just had a whole load of stuff to sell on a train we know that we can turn around and cut a load of trees from our tree farm and end up with a, uh, a, a, a good amount of wood. I mean, it only takes six trees from our tree farm to fill here. And even with a whole load of stuff having been uh, produced, we've still got 11,000. So I'm thinking probably next day uh, we're going to have to refill the sawmill. Uh, so cut some more trees down and get some more wood into here uh, and uh, and keep the process going will uh, will be really profitable for us we want we want to keep the money flowing at this point because we have a lot of stuff to uh, to deal with now i do have one question for you guys uh what do you think we should do uh, in so far as um uh in so far as getting some extra stuff to put into our spinnery i could very easily put a garden in and, uh, and use that to generate a load of cotton to help with the wool i think it's going to be a long while otherwise for us to uh, to actually get the wool we need to finish the the bow top from the sheep so uh, yeah i'm very intrigued as to what you guys think to that um the other thing i might do today uh, although I have nowhere to really store it, is uh, do some hay. Uh, we really want to make some hay before winter comes. I don't really want to have to buy another bale uh, in order to feed the sheep over winter and keep that functioning. So, uh, yeah, I think we might uh, do some hay making today if we have time after we've uh, we've done this. 
stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, what do you think? Do you think we should maybe place a garden down, get some cotton production going through that uh, to supplement our wool and help make some fabric to get the shipyard going because i think it is basically the final stage pretty much that we're on 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 our ship so uh uh what do you think let me know in the comments uh by the time i'm i'm looking to make a decision on that i think i'll be back from holiday so uh yeah it'll be uh it'll be interesting we're going into the winter now anyway so uh it'll probably be a springtime decision there we go and uh and getting the ship done of course is going to absolutely give us the money we need to finish off uh the roller coaster and get the factories we need for that and we don't need a lot of stuff from those factories um it's basically a single uh, a, a single pallet out of most of them so yeah once we get those uh that is going to very quickly uh, complete that stage and uh and and make us a decent uh amount of money and set things up uh let's get this on top look at that yeah perfect so all of these are going down to make bowls and pepper grinders we know we are going to be outputting more of them so it's not a problem for us uh, if we're going to need these for any of our other factories. And as I said, the other factories are not going to need much material to go through them. Uh, it's just the big expense of those factories in the first place. Uh, we need to uh, get that turned off as well. There we go. Turn that off. Let's get our ramps back on. Yep, that's all good. Right time to get this delivered down to the wood turner and from there uh we'll start making money out of that because uh it's run out now bringing this up to the side of the wood turner in fact i think we want to i don't know whether we need to do the exclamation mark to unload these here but i'm guessing not i think that's just to unload wood yeah there we go all of that in delivered and we can have a look and yep so uh the pepper grinder from wood uh we need to deactivate that and from the bowls uh we can now activate this from the planks long and yeah those can then be selling from there um the nice thing is they both they all go into the same thing so uh, it's it's not like we uh, found ourselves in a bad position we got 10,091 and this will now keep giving us a nice steady income i could if i wanted sell stuff straight from our um from our sawmill as well but i find that we get to load all of this up on the train at once and make a ton of money from that. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be doing that as that builds up. For now, we're actually pretty good. So, I want to head back to our uh, camp. I think I think we want to back head back to the logging yard, and from there, uh, I think we're going to go and cut and bale some hay. Oh, we've got an accident over there. Let's go round the top way. Otherwise, we're not going to get through. But yeah, looks like a couple of cars have come to a head. The other thing I need to do uh, when we get back, actually, is you might notice the trailer is in fairly bad state of disrepair. So uh, we'll just pull this up to our workshop down here and get that fixed as well. Yeah, bring this down here, spin it round like that and it'll uh if we need to repair anything else it'll tell us so uh yeah low loader condition is pretty bad 1300 ow uh the tlx itself oh we might as well repair that while we're here too not gonna repaint how much is the repaint cost for it actually there is no repaint cost for either of them ah oh, because we can't repaint them at this workshop uh i like that we don't want to repair it and repaint any of our equipment, so that's fine. Uh, the other thing I want to do, because it's bugging me, 
Uh, I need to pull these trailers out of here and rework this area here. Maybe put some gravel in. Uh, this tree can remain. This tree can come out because it absolutely is in the way. And this tree can remain. Um, but yeah, we need, to, we need to do something about the ground around here today as well. So we'll see if we can do that as well. Let's get the skid steer off first. So out with our ramps. Now un Oop, no, I want to unstrap the skid steer first. There we go. And let's take the straps off that our long planks were on as well. And then start her up, and out they go. Perfect. That is great. And our little skid steer is actually more used for uh, carting stuff about now than anything else. I'm kind of tempted to permanently put it on. Uh, the other bit. Oh, we actually have some seeds left over from when we did the grass. So if we did do cotton on here uh, in the uh, in the garden, then we already have a uh, a ready made set of seeds. All we need to do is get the seeds uh, is get some fertilizer um, in order to do that and get that set up. Right, let's park this here. It's a little bit in my way for what I want to do, but I'm going to go and sort this area of the yard first. So, undo you. There we go. Pull that out. Swing us around, and we'll pull the other two trailers out as well. Uh, we do need as well to pop up to the mine and grab some more, of, uh, some more iron ore. There's so much I need to do at the moment. Uh, I think that's probably going to be something we do in December. Get some more trees cut next time. And then we'll have a trip up to the mine in December. And see if we can't uh, go and grab some more uh, iron ore to keep our iron ore uh, going. We're probably going to need some iron ore, actually. Uh, some iron, some, some metal rolls for the barrel factory when we come to do that in the near future so i'm expecting us to be using more of our productions in various places around here going forwards right there we go let's turn that off and so this area here is where i want to clear up we're probably going to end up using that stump grinder in a moment to get rid of this tree um, shall we just use that in general? Because this is also a cultivator. So, start this up. Turn out. Yeah, there we go. I hate how slow this goes when it's got this on the front. It does not have this issue if you have anything else attached to it. Uh, but if you've got this on the front, it just, yeah, does not work properly. Right. So, up to here. Turn it on put it down and yeah I'm expecting this tree to be able to be got wow there we go and then we can grind the stump down right and that clears that out and we get rid of all of these bits here we might need to get rid of that stone as well, actually. I think that is... Uh, this is a wicked piece of kit. Yeah, I think we're going to have to get rid of that stone. I think that stone might be in the way for what we're doing. How is that? Oh, we'll take this tree out. There we go. Down it goes. It is so powerful. And so wicked. Right, there we are. That's cleared that area out. Now, one thing I did think was we could put another shed in here. Uh, let's turn you off. That off, that's off. Before I go and hit the wheel on my uh, other wheel loader. And get this down the back here. Um, because, yeah, we could put another shed in here, I think. Uh, very easily. I don't know if we have a cheap enough shed to put in this space to put these in. What do we have in the sheds? So sheds. Just want like a cheap... Oh god, that's huge. Yeah, not that one. 
Um, let's see what else have we got in here. Nothing obvious. There's lots of really huge stuff. And lots of stuff that, that costs quite a bit. And that actually wouldn't fit the stuff in. Uh, that's too big. I think everything at the moment is too big for what we want. So I may have to go and find a shed, I think. Uh, the only other place that I found stuff is under other. Um, we've got a few options under here at the moment. But there's things like, uh, oh, that's a really small garage. Yeah, there's nothing else here. So uh, I think uh, we'll probably just put some gravel or something down first here. And then we can update it later and get a better setup then. So let's bring this over here. Painting. Uh, we want the gravel. We want to enlarge it and change its shape. And just give me a good area here to place these trailers on. Looks like we've got a couple of bits of wood left from that tree. Will that fit three all three of those? I think that will. So uh, I want to make that smaller and then we'll just square it off at the back there. Basically, that's the footprint we want if we put a shed down here. A shed that will cover that sort of area. Uh, which would be pretty good, I think. Yep. Um, are those little chunks of wood? That is... Ah, that's a little chunk of wood. That's a stump. So let's get this back over here and sort that out. And there we are. A nice air, new area that we can put all of our trailers in. And uh, and store them properly. Wow, this has given me so much more room to work with for these trailers. Yeah, this is no longer a logging camp. This, this is now a logging yard. Very much. We are well established in this area. And I really like it. I really like how it's, uh, it's all come together in here. And how it comes off the road. And I think we might need to put a gateway in at the top just to... To pretty it up up there a little bit but everything in here i really love it i am so happy with our setup here proper homesteading setup really there we go that is our truck done so i'm going to park this in the shed and then i think it might be time to get the Kubota out and start doing a little bit of work with that it's a while since we've had this tractor out and we have never had this tractor out to do this. This is our first opportunity to, uh, to get to do some grass work. Now, one thing about this mower is this mower does not row. So uh, I'm going to have to see how much a little wind mower is. There's not one available for sale. No. So uh, wind rowers. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, we could do one of the side ones. Yeah, that would be different. And it's only 5,000. It's exact. In fact, it's exactly 5,000. Width is only 2.5 meters versus 3.4 for the Potinger. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll cut this first and then we'll go and have a look down at the shop and see what we've got. So unfold you. We'll go around the headlands first. Get those cut. Uh, are we going to have to uh, head this as well? I don't think I've got the PPO attack. Do I? do I have a tether as well? That's the next question I've got. No. So we've got a baler. Uh, we've got no tether and we've got no windrower. So we're going to have to go and buy both of those things uh, to get this grass work done. We are eating into these profits, um, but we are going to have to uh, to do that. Have I not connected my pipes up either? Nope, nothing was connected, which is interesting because uh, I'm slightly surprised it unfolded as a result. This is a very odd shaped field, uh, quite fiddly around the edges to make sure that you've got the edge all the time. And trying to keep an eye on where I am over the edge versus uh, where I'm going. 
is fun from in here. Not too bad if you're in third person, but uh, yeah, from in here, it's a little bit more finicky. Uh, it is working well. I mean, it's going to take us a little while with this mower to do this. Uh, but I think uh, we should be all right. And uh, now we're just going to turn around and we're going to start going the other way around the field until we've got the whole field cut. One thing I tend to do as I'm cutting a field like this is I will simplify uh, all of the corners and everything. So uh, it ends up becoming uh, a lot more uh, amorphous than some of the uh, kinks and, uh, and, and sections would suggest it would be. Uh, you can see that in the other side where it's already beginning to straighten out and I'll straighten that out more. Um, and on this side where this was not this straight along this edge when we started but because we're like four rows in uh, it's now become a lot straighter uh, similarly here I will take the most direct path to that corner and as a result that line now becomes a lot straighter and yeah you can see here even where we have a massive cutting bit I will just cut across this corner bit up here and, uh, and the whole thing just becomes so much simpler to work uh, as a result. I, uh, I like doing that. That, uh, that just simplifies everything. I, I think a lot of farmers do that in real life anyway. They'll, uh, they'll make things a little bit more manageable in that kind of way. And yeah, we end up with a smaller and smaller field. And we got to the stage now where we don't need to do the end bits. We just come round and cut, uh, come down on the other side because uh, it's getting too short along the end. So it actually ends up being uh, more reasonable to just turn around and go the other way, especially when you get to the end like this bit up here. Because uh, to here, absolutely, that is not enough to cut. Uh, around the end although there's a tiny tuft there which will come and get at the end but this whole field now has uh, has been cut in a fairly quick amount of time let's do that like so round and yep yeah, we're about two to three cuts nope i think we have two cuts from the end brilliant not bad for our first cut on here. We're not using precision farming, so I don't know exactly uh, how good the yield is, but it's not bad looking at it and, uh, and should do us fairly well, I think. Certainly, we're going to get a few bales off here, uh, which will keep our sheep fed for, uh, for a good little while. With that done, I think we need to go and get ourselves a tether. Yeah, we don't have one here. So let's reverse this in and get this parked. We do have some space at the side here to park stuff as well if we need to. Oh, no, no, don't do that. Just want to drop you off like that. Right, let's go down to the shop and see if we can get ourselves a tether. So into the shop and over this way. I did think that there was a shed for storing bales and things, but I can't find it in the uh, in the construction menu here at all. It's not that one. I mean, that one is way too big. Um, it's not that one. Oh, that one is actually, wow, uh, 152,000. That might be perfect for our trucks. But, um, yeah, nothing... I'm sure there was, like, a little carport. Uh, it's like the... It's it's the one that we actually have on... Uh, uh, on Spruce Mountain. But I can't find it anywhere. And it's not in the decoration, unfortunately. So, maybe it's more of a base game thing or something that's included in other maps. Uh, what we need here, however is a tether a uh, little potinger is seven thousand i think we'll go with this i'm gonna lease it we're trying to keep the costs down at the moment because we're saving up money so yeah we'll lease that pretty much anything new i'm leasing at the moment uh we'll probably do the same with a 
uh, when we come to get a wind rower as well. Get that least two. So onto there. And that's the, uh, yeah, this is the little pot, uh, potting at Alpine one, which I uh, I really quite like. Great little uh, Ted of this one. I think for next time I might try and download some of the shed options and uh, and see what we've got and see what we can put in. Certainly we need uh, something to store the bales in. Uh, something just really close to the sheep would be good. Uh, to pull in and unfold. And yeah, we, we need to do that. Uh, I think we need something for our trailers as well would be good. And, uh, and go from there. This, yeah, we are heading nicely. Uh, great little piece of kit. Uh, just what we needed. Again, as I'm going around the field here, I'm sort of simplifying the edges a little bit. Uh, making sure that uh, where I'm going is, is fairly well covered. But at the same time, allows me to easily get around all the corners and everything. And, uh, yeah, we've got a decent amount of hay up here. Uh, we are losing light, though. It is uh, 5 to 3 in the afternoon. Uh, we've still got the wind rowing to do and uh, and the bailing if we want to get this done today. And uh, ideally, I'd like to get this done today because I'd like to get, the, uh, get this grass rolled as well. Um, but with three jobs to do, I think that that's going to be pushing it a bit. So uh, we'll see how far we get. Uh, we'll see how far we do. We kind of need to roll it in order to uh, fully fertilize it for the next cut. Although we are a way off the next cut, I don't think we're going to need to cut for a while. So uh, it may just be a case of, right, we'll move to the next day. Uh, we'll get this... Uh, failed and uh, and rolled next day having uh, done everything else today um but we've also got a fairly busy day next day anyway we do need to uh fill up the iron ore as i said uh we also need to probably sell off a whole load of stuff and if we can not only will we get uh i think we're gonna get the the shingle factory today we are less than two thousand pound from it uh i think we will probably end up with a sell-off uh getting one of the other factories and getting ourselves even closer um i one question that probably is coming up and is is uh, you guys are probably thinking of is why don't i sell one of my existing factories uh, for example, the floorboarding factory that we don't seem to be using at the moment. Uh, the answer to that is because I don't know if floorboards are something that's required for any more stages that we're working on. Uh, I also don't know if we might build another ship and we definitely need floorboards for that. So, uh, yeah, there are multiple reasons for holding on to that. Uh, similarly with the wood turner, I don't know if there's any need for staircase railings. And in actual fact, it is giving us money at the moment because uh, we put the long planks in there and uh, and it's producing money that way. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's all good. And uh, that's why I want to hold on to that. So we'll just keep purchasing the uh, the stuff around town, the, uh, the productions around town. And eventually, we should have all the ones we need in order to... Uh, complete the job that we're here to do which is building the roller coaster and uh, by that point we should also have a really good income from everywhere because we can cut trees every day deliver them to factories and immediately sell the products for example barrels from the barrel factory uh, we've got f all sorts of furniture we'll be able to sell from the furniture factory yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be wild because we are going to make a whole load of money uh, from stuff. And um, turn you off. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and uh, and as a result, we're, we're just going to... Well, at that point, we're going to be completely self-sufficient and uh, in a position where pretty much done everything we can on here because after that it's just a case of expanding expanding and expanding 
Right, let's get ourselves a wind rower then. Park it up here. Into the shop. Check that nothing's come into here. Nope, it hasn't. So uh, we want wind rowers. And yeah, I'm just going to go for this little potinger. Uh, it's only going to cost us 359 per day. So that's perfect. Uh, we can just have that hanging around. Uh, doesn't tax our little Kubota M6 much, this. Uh, it's It's got plenty of power to, uh, to run something like this. And yeah, we are just... 200 uh, 2000 pounds shy of the uh of getting that in fact nope we've gone over to 1600 we are now six uh 599 pounds shy of uh getting the uh of getting the shingle factory uh which is fantastic so uh homeward bound we go i think in the next hour at uh, five o'clock we are going to have the money to get that purchased uh which is great that means the next time we can supply that with some materials and uh and get the shingles going we only need one pallet of shingles in order to uh meet what's needed down at the uh down at the roller coaster so hell if we could get whatever's needed in there down there tonight uh, then tomorrow we would uh, we'd be able to get that out. We're back to the logging yard and back to our field. I think if we yeah no unfold that yeah we want to be going around this way first, uh, pushing the grass in or pushing the hay into the field. So turn it on, drop it down, and away we go. And yeah, this will uh, this will draw it all in, and then we can go around the second time and uh, make a uh, full row out of that, uh, which will be yeah very useful. Oh wow! Yeah, the edge of this field so very fiddly, but then uh, I made it that way. Gone 5 p.m. The shadows are getting long. The day is coming to an end. But we have hit 70,000 for, uh, for our pot. So uh, that's really good. I'm very, very happy about that. Now, I could do the shingle factory right now. But I'm kind of thinking we have a whole load of stuff that's going to sell overnight and, and do overnight. We'll, we'll make more money overnight. So uh, I might save up and see whether we can afford one of the other ones uh tomorrow and go from there but certainly we're in a position where i'm expecting uh we can buy at least one of the new productions uh we are gonna sell a whole load of product uh next time and uh, i think we will end up uh getting one or two of the productions and go from there uh, which will be fantastic. I mean, that is, you know, if we can get the shingles and something else, that would be even better. So that's what we're going to try and do. Uh, we are still doing this rowing up, though. So um, we're going to be doing this for a little while longer. Not too long to go, but it is getting dark, as I said. So uh, I think I'm going to leave this here. I'll get this done uh, before we finish today. Uh, but I'm going to leave this here and we will pick this up next day. Uh, we will get this all uh, bailed up and, uh, and ready to sort our sheep out over the winter. Uh, we have got up to 87,000 overnight. So as we don't have the money to actually move on with any of our other uh factories at the moment i want to head out early today and we're gonna go and buy the shingle factory get started there he's gonna pull out in front of me and uh yeah get that bought uh we then want to get anything down to here uh that needs to uh needs to come down in order to create some shingles so that we can get them delivered to the roller coaster and get the roller coaster moving again 
and uh, after that we're going to get our hay bailed up that we have left over from last time get that out of the way uh, before finally being able to go and uh, sell a whole load of stuff that is sitting down at our uh, sawmill because yeah we need to then raise a, another 110 and 120,000 uh, in order to get the last couple of bits done so we are down at the shingle factory let's pop into here we can buy it for 70,000 yes please and our next production is purchased what do we have here for shingles we need long planks perfect so uh they are going in storage so we will go up to uh i think we'll head back to our uh yard um where we can switch over i've actually put the truck bed back on here and i think what we want to do actually no we have the unimog back so what we'll do is we'll take the unimog uh along with our trailer and our uh little uh teleskid and we'll go up to the sawmill see if we produce some more planks long after uh, we dropped all of them yesterday off to uh, uh the wood turner so i'm just pulling in to uh the pet uh, the fuel station because we don't have any fuel in our uh unimog and we've had a great demand at rural farm south i think this might change our plans for the day uh hotel in fact no so rural farm south is one there 748 for the hotel there's a great demand that is higher than the top price and i don't think that's going to last very long so what we're going to have to do is get this uh back to the yard i think and go and instead take our truck and the wheel loader uh, down to the the sawmill and instead go and fill up the wood chips go and see if we can take advantage of that great demand because yeah that is that is so much better than we're going to get later in the year i love it when you have to have a sudden change of plans because of something the game throws at you uh, always fun when that situation happens We've got that there. Where is my wheel loader? Ah, it's around the back here. Right, so I'm going to... I'm actually going to use this area behind here to start storing some of my uh, equipment and things. Uh, especially things that we kind of want to get to for the area we're working in. Let's that do that here. I have downloaded some sheds uh, to give a try on here. Uh, unfortunately, none of them really quite worked out as I would hope um the one that i can put round or that i'm looking to put there is a big wooden shed and it doesn't quite fit my three trailers so uh i think we're gonna have to i'm gonna have to have a little bit of a rethink on how things go i'm quite happy with how things are on here at the moment uh but um yeah we need to we need to have a think about how things are going to work right that's there now, I know the great demand at the hotel started last night. It actually started slightly after the end of the last video, while I was still doing the wind rowing. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's one that's been sitting there for a while. This is the reason why I'm trying to jump on it fairly quickly, uh, because I know that it's, it's been going for a little while already. In fact, I've got an idea. While we're doing this let's put that on follow me on that so do we have a driver in there no can you follow please waiting to okay we have got a driver in there now good um and then we'll take this not that we'll take this at the front and that way we'll have stuff in place when we want to get uh further along later uh, yeah, definitely the way to go. Let's get properly set up and go from there. Have we got... I've got a log jammed underneath. It's stopping me moving. 
Oh, what else is going to go wrong today? This is already completely away from where all my plans were for this. Uh, I love it when this happens. It makes things really, really interesting. So I'm going to take this into this area here because we must have some wooden planks, long wooden planks here. And we're going to be doing a lot of loading up here later. Uh, a lot of extra money in uh yeah there we are there's a couple of those so that's perfect uh we'll turn this off because we're going to leave this here i'm going to jump into this take the hired worker off and just uh turn us around and head back out and head back down to where the uh oh, uh where the wood chip is which is just around the corner over here. And yeah, hopefully we're going to catch this great demand. Get a whole load of extra money in. Every penny right now counts. And, uh, and we want to make as much as we can from this. And we do have a decent amount in here. I mean, this is more than it looks. So let's move the truck into place with our big dump trailer and then into this and the other great demand price actually wasn't bad uh, at the farm but uh yeah the better one over 700 uh that is uh, that is really good so we want to get as much of this into here as possible i think there'll only be one trailer load but that's still 48 uh or 48,000. yeah so uh if we've got that that will be perfect there's a lot of wood chips here i mean it's it's a huge amount uh we are about half full on the trailer i think it's not going to be a full trailer's worth i don't think but we are yeah looking really really good we have left them for a while we haven't been doing an awful lot of stuff with the sawmill since we last emptied this uh, so that's that's why there aren't quite so many. I'm expecting now that our tree farm is up uh, That we are going to be doing a lot more stuff with the sawmill a lot more delivery here and uh, a lot more output um, Because we know we can make good money from here um, And we also know that a lot of what we take from here, especially the long planks are used elsewhere so uh, it makes sense for us to use this as our first point of call for all of our logs and uh, and getting them loaded up and that does mean we are going to have a lot more sawdust uh, sorry wood chip because this isn't sawdust this is wood chip we're gonna have a lot more wood chip that is uh used and uh and, and output from here um as a result and uh yeah plenty of places to sell it to as well we're nearly full on the trailer. There really was a lot more here than I thought there was. Uh, I don't think this trailer is going to take much more. It's, it's like 90%, I think. 93% full, this trailer. That's, um, that's a bit mad. Uh, in fact, I think one more bucket is going to fill this trailer. Um, which, yeah, we've easily got a bucket here. Um, absolutely. So let's get this filled. Yep, there is more than 3,000 litres of uh, wood chips here left. So brilliant. We are in a place where we can make a whole load of cash from uh, these wood chips. Hopefully the great demand is still there. Uh, 16 litres over. We'll put those back onto the pile because otherwise we won't be able to put anything else in our bucket. Uh, and yeah, that is really good. So I'm happy with that. We're going to leave this here for now. And we're going to head out with this. And do we still have a great demand for wood chips at the hotel? No, we don't. Uh, of course we don't. So prices are all on the way up. 590 is still well below the 674. So uh yeah, this has been a colossal waste of our time. Time to get back to the job. 
that we uh, had originally planned to do. Let's start this up. Get this here. And, oh, no, I thought I had that going. Yeah, there we go. Uh, take all the straps off. Oh, no, like that. Don't think we have any on. No, start it up. And, uh, yeah, let's load up these two uh, um, long bits of plank here. Sometimes my brain just will not connect to the right words. It's very, very annoying. And it's hence the reason why uh, you get me making long breaks in, uh, in videos sometimes. When I'm just trying to think of the word. You know, long planks is not a word I should have trouble with. And yet, uh, my brain sometimes will not go, Ah, you're thinking of long planks. The things that are in front of you. And you're trying to put on a trailer. So it does happen. Uh, but we get there in the end. And in this case, these will go nicely on the flatbed. So we're going to put these on here. We're going to try and put the weight over the wheels. Um, because if I don't do that, that ends up causing us issues. We'll strap those down. And we will head down to the shingle factory and get these delivered. As long as it makes it over. Yep. So uh, away we go. Let's get some shingles. It's really annoying when that happens. When you go chasing a great demand. And it just completely messes up. Uh, and, uh, and disappears. Right. We want to park these down at the back. So we'll pull in here. And then we'll reverse this round. And into position on the side should just as uh, as we had with the wood turner earlier yep just empty those out say earlier last time there we go and then we can head up oh actually do we have them turned on i think we do but it's worth checking uh yes shingle factory is turned on we only need one set of shingles from it so uh yeah we, we should get a pallet of shingles from here uh by the end of the day so that will be really good um and while we're waiting for that what we'll do is we will start to load up the train i think um and then we need to go and bail our bales as well so uh still plenty for us to do around here today and some stuff that is actually going to earn us some money too the train is just going past as we're approaching, so it's going to reverse up when we get to uh, the fill point or the loading point, which is just up here on the left. So I'm going to pull in and yeah, we don't need the Unimog here at all. I could have uh, I could have sent that back, although to be honest, having the Unimog here uh, means that we're going to be in a good position in a minute anyway. Right, let's call the train back. And it should get here any time. Yep, yeah, train is rented. we just got to wait for it to arrive. And here it comes. Just coming over the bridge now. So, yeah, 200 odd meters to arrive. We can head over here and grab our... Little teleskid as it pulls into the uh, station behind us. And right, I think best bet is to start getting these in first. And we want to go three across with these, I think. Lots of little planks. Uh, get them in. We're not going to be able... To, I mean, these are not used on any of our productions at the moment. So we can just get these on. And uh, and that won't be too bad. Uh, none of the... Oh, I do need to run one set of the beams down to the uh, boatyard, as I said. The boatyard doesn't need them. It's, it's not saying... Well, it's saying it needs zero of them. Um, but that just means that I need to at least put one set down there to go into storage. 
uh, for the next ship that we build. Um, but it is very much, uh, yeah, needed in order to finish the ship. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Let's bring those in a little bit wide into there. I should be able to just drive straight forwards and pick up the next set and be straight in line. Yeah. Got so much to load onto this train, uh, which is brilliant, but also it's going to take a while. This is the last pallet of the standard planks, and we've got an odd number of standard planks again for some odd reason. Don't quite know why. Is that going to be... Oh, yeah. Depth perception. Not a thing in farm sim. Really difficult to see exactly where you are without moving the camera. Always has been. And uh, I talk about it a fair amount, actually. Especially when I'm stacking stuff. It's uh, it, it plays quite a big role not being able to tell exactly where I am. Right, I think we need to move the train forward a bit. So what I'm going to do first is actually load on the prefabs. Uh, we'll get the prefabs on first uh, before we start stacking beams towards the back of the train. Uh, we are going to make a lot of money off beams. Wow. At one point, we were very, very short on beams. We are not now. Last of the prefab and the maneuverability of this little skid steer, this little teleskid, is fantastic. Being able to get up on here and uh, and load those on as well as that has been absolutely wonderful. Meant I've had not had to move the train back at all to get all of the prefabs on. And they're on very nicely. There we go. Uh, they are on. Yeah, they are on. So let's jump in the train, start the engine, and we're going to move ever so slightly forwards. Just until there. Perfect. Whoop, whoop. Turn that off. Don't need that running. And that then gives us free access to the rest of the train, which is perfect because we have an awful lot of these uh, uh, wooden beams to get on here now. And we're going to do them like the, uh, the smaller planks, uh, two by two. As always, we've got quite a few cars waiting for us because the train is still there. Uh, we also have an even number of the uh, of these pallets. So that's not great for us because, uh, as I said before, we need to hold one of these back. And we've only really got space, actually, for one more stack on here. There's not really uh, space at the back. We could do it. Uh, we could put one on the front section, maybe. Oh, this is. These are fairly heavy for this little uh, teleskid, though. It's not been overly happy about loading these up onto here. Uh, but we have got it. It, it has been done, um, and it is useful having the extending arm. So I think we're going to leave probably one down here. <laughs> we should be able to get one more on. We can get one into the. Uh, the one at the front so we'll uh, we'll do that and then we'll hold one back so that we can go and drop it down at the shipyard in a moment so let's grab this up to here whoa slow down don't want to go wildly all over the place because that's how uh, things fly off slow and steady seems to be the way whenever using any kind of stacking in farm sim there we go and then i just want to grab one more shove it on the uh shove it in the front section and uh that will then have sorted uh a lot of our money issues we may even be able to afford one of the two remaining uh productions we need to complete the roller coaster Oh yeah, here's the maneuverability of this. So all the way up here, turn 90 degrees, and then maneuver yourself so that you can get this onto this front carriage. 
How fantastic is that? That just works so well. Wait. And then lock that down there. Yeah, only two of them. And then turn 90 degrees. Just on a dime that turns. And uh, we can return the train, which is brilliant. Let's get that going. Let's earn some money from that then. So uh, off you go. Thank you. Look at all that money heading off. So that's going to head down the far end and make us a load of money in a minute. Uh, I need to load up this so that we can go and run this down to the shipyard. And uh, get that going. Not that that's what's holding us up at the moment. What's holding us up with the, uh, with the ship at the moment is the... Uh, it is the fact that we don't have enough wool. Uh, we we need to output more wool. Or, as I was saying last time, we need to output cotton. I am very interested in what you guys think, whether we should speed things up a little bit by adding a garden and putting some cotton on it. Let's strap that down. It overhangs a little bit, but it'll be fine. And turn this on. Drop that down at the back. So we're going to have a quick... Oh, we're going to go to the shingle factory via the boat. And, uh, yeah, we'll drop that pallet off at the boat. Uh, and then we will head and get the shingles uh, and take them down to the roller coaster. That will then be the shingle factory part of this done. And um, we're then on to doing... The other bits which is the furniture the furniture is going to be a big one and uh, and we want to get that one as soon as we can let's have a look where's our train got to it's nearly made it to the other side so we are going to be making money in a minute just watching that bit down the bottom right left hand corner to uh to make sure that we uh we see the exact moment when all that money comes in. And is it going to be enough for us to get our next factory? Which will be the furniture factory if it's at 110. Or the barrel factory at 120. And away goes the train. Reaching the sell point. Where's my money? There we go. Instant £80,000. Absolutely fantastic. Not enough to buy either production, unfortunately. And down to the boatyard, we arrive with these beams. Uh, these should go in here fairly easily. Yep, there we go. And where's that leave us? Uh, fabric. 3,600 litres of fabric. Uh, yeah, it took one litre of the metal beams. That is a little bit weird. And I'm just going to reposition that. Let's head to the shingle factory and see if we have a set of shingles from there uh, that we can go and sell. It's getting dark. It's gone 10 past 5 and it's getting fairly dark. But we do have a pallet of shingles. Fantastic. So let's undo that. Oh, brilliant. This is all we need. We, we don't need many shingles. This is the ridiculous thing. It is like a single pallet we're buying this whole place for. Um, but we have more and more productions now where we can create stuff and, uh, and sell it. And we can sell it for uh, the most price if we can. So let's get this onto here. We are becoming a force to be reckoned with here on Silver Run Forest. And undo the back one. Yep. And then get this loaded back onto our trailer. And we can move on with the uh, roller coaster. If only we could create some more wool or some, uh, some stuff to create more fabric with. That would be yeah, that would be really useful. Could get more sheep, or we could get a, uh, a 
garden for some cotton. It's just, we're really north. You know, this isn't exactly somewhere. You know what I've done? I've left this on. Let's turn it off. Right. Uh, yeah. We want to get to the roller coaster, get these shingles dropped off. And I think most of what we need right now is stuff from the furniture factory. So that is going to be our next target. We are at 100,000. Uh, we are two months away from selling the uh, selling the wood chips. Although that might come up next month because quite often best price comes a month before you expect it. So we'll be keeping an eye on that next time. And here we're delivering our first batch of shingles to the roller coaster. And what we need now, so 719 litres of shingles were needed. We've delivered 1,000 litres. Uh, so we need chairs, tables, barrels, and buckets. And, yeah, those come from the last two productions we need. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to head home now. Uh, it's been a busy old day. With any luck, we'll be able to sell the... Uh, wood chips early on next time and uh, and make the remaining money we need from that i think looking at the amount of money we've got and everything uh, that our best bet going forward is actually going to be to expand our production with sheep and uh, and get them so that they are producing more wool. Uh, we have 103,000, which actually means that we can build a much bigger sheep pen than we currently have and uh, and get the wool coming out quicker. And I think that is going to be the important thing for us to do. Uh, I am currently baling this field up. Though this is the hay we have left over from last time. A little bit of an odd thing to be doing in December, uh, but we found that over the year, even with everything set to be seasonal on here uh we tend to end up doing things at odd times anyway and we need to get this hay baled up in order to feed it to the sheep now we're going with the smallest bales i'm currently creating uh 125 liter bales in fact i'm not sure this bale uh, does create anything bigger than that so uh yeah we're just gonna go around we're gonna get all of this field bailed up uh ready to uh sort ourselves out with a larger uh sheet pen and yeah we'll sell the current one what we do want to do though is try and make sure that we don't have to sell all of our sheep to do that and i think for that we're going to need to get an animal trailer of some sort it's going to have to hold at least 15 sheep, so it's going to have to be a fairly big one. I've double-checked this baler, and yeah, it does only do the 125 centimeter bales. That's not a huge problem for us. Uh, it does allow us to uh, create bales at the very least, and it was a nice cheap baler. And we're doing everything sort of on the sheep side here, fairly small at the moment. Uh, we are doing alternate rows in order to make it easy to turn at the ends and other than this row where we had a bale in the way at the end everything else is pretty clear for the rest of this uh, i think we're probably going to get about five or six bales off here which is pretty good and once we've done that i think we're going to take our truck down to the shop and uh, and see exactly what we can get in the way of something to uh to get our sheep stored even for a very short period of time uh, so that we can rebuild their area and, uh, and make space for a lot more of them. Coming to our first pass or the end of our first pass through the field and we are up to six and a half bales. Uh, we've got roughly three rows left so I think we might get two, uh, two to three bales off the rest of this field. Uh, which would be fairly good. Uh, we've got six bales already to get nine in total would be great. We're looking at taking the number of sheep we've got from 15 to uh, closer to 50 with the upgrades we're looking to do today. 
And I'm actually doing these upgrades rather than uh, going and buying another production. Because having had a week or so to think about this, uh, we have the ability uh, then to create a whole load of wool, to create a whole load of fabric, and in doing so, uh, get a ship out. And in getting the ship out, uh, we'll then have a whole load of money to invest in more productions so uh we will uh take that and, and we'll do that in order to uh get the ship out buy the productions and get our roller coaster finished it's gonna be fairly close but there we go that is a hundred percent uh we've got a little strip of hay that we'll leave in here because hay baling is the only thing we're going to be doing with this baler and uh, and so that'll give us a little boost for next time we cut the field and done there we are so that's nine bales in total off here absolutely perfect for what we want uh we can now take this back up to the farm and yeah we need to go and get something that we can put uh 15 sheep into just while we destroy and rebuild their area and uh yeah make a, a decent little amount of money off so that we can uh, upgrade things and get some more sheep in so having a look at our animal transport options uh those two are horses only that is 13 sheep um that is 12 sheep uh that is 38 sheep that is really annoying because it is is two sheep short of uh what we need for here um and would be absolutely perfect so i popped onto the mod hub and had a quick look to see if there's a different an alternative uh animal transport uh see if we can get these sheep into something else and i think i've found something so i've brought the tlx uh, 3,500 down. Oh, what's the number we've got on this? Uh, Zach B. Okay. So let's pop into the shop here and pop into the livestock trailers, the animal transports. Um, and it's this one here. Uh, so this livestock trailer, this comes in a pair with this man truck. And I think this is going to be really good for us. It takes up to 20 sheep, which is perfect for our use. Uh, main color, I'm going to give it the olive green. Um, we're going to keep uh, the Zach B number plate on here. And let's lease that. Uh, 3,254. So that's going to keep us still above the 100,000. There we go. And then we'll jump in this and just bring this up behind it uh and yeah this should easily pull out i mean the, this this has quite a bit of horsepower this truck so i'm not too worried about this being able to pull it it was really between this and the oh, it's got to come further back oh, really really not able to judge distances um it was either between this and oh hello the uh <laughs> our, our uh, mercedes our um other bit why can I not remember the name of things sometimes? Uh, between that and this, our, our Unimog. That's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, it was between this and the Unimog. And uh, I decided to go with this because this has a bit more horsepower. Looks like this is a little bit rigid though. Despite the fact this has a... Uh, what looks like a, a bit of a, a, a hinge there. Uh, it's lifting the back of our truck up. Thankfully, and I don't know if our Unimog has this feature, but this definitely does. Let's switch over to the trailer and we should be able... Yeah, there we go. We can move that hitch up and down. So if I move it right to the top, that's going to mitigate that problem. Now, this trailer does have some neat features on it. So uh, you can raise the top of it a little bit. And you can also open and close the windows at the side, I think. 
if I can work out how to do that. Oh, there. Oh, it's only on that side. So that listen rate le raises and lowers. And this uh, opens and closes the windows on that side, but not on the other side. So I'm going to open them all up. We're going to have our sheep in here for a little while. So I kind of want to uh, have them sitting there for a bit uh, while we sort our uh, sheep pen out. So let's get this back up to the logging camp and uh, we can get the sheep pen. Well, we can load the sheep into this and then get the sheep pen replaced with something a little bit bigger. This TLX definitely still has its uses and I'm, I'm quite glad I took this down there to do that. I, I think the Unimog would have had trouble uh, hitching up to this. And uh, I wonder if the uh, I wonder if the Kubota would as well. That that seemed to be a very rigid pickup hitch there. So we're going to pull this in and try to make sure that we're in a good place with it. So back it up. And I want to take the sheep out first because I don't want to spawn more wool or, or anything like that uh, before we are able to, uh, well, while we've, while we've removed it. Oh, and open that up. Yeah, there we go. So move those to the trailer. Yes. Okay. And move these to the trailer. Let's turn there. Yep. Okay. So that's all 15 of our sheep. Uh, and go back. So we'll close that up. And then we'll move this forwards. There we go. Yeah, there we are. And we'll just come park this over here out the way. And then our sheep are nice and safe. And we can put them back in in a bit. Let's turn that off. And then we're going to have to get this. And go and get the... Uh, well, we've not got a... I don't think we have a bale spike. I think we uh, only have these forks, which is fine. Uh, I could easily spike this with this. But uh, I think we probably... We're going to be doing a lot of work with the bales that we've got on the field. Uh, yeah, we're going to want to go and get a bale spike for those, I think. Uh, there's only 113 litres left in this bale. So I'm glad we bailed up all of the other hay bales today. Uh, because if we hadn't, uh, we would have had to have gone and buy one. Uh, and as we're going to be putting a lot more sheep into here, I think that, uh, that that's a good thing. Right. It looks like I've sort of set this up so I have to approach it from this side. So uh, the way I'm going to do this, I think, is to come in here and scoop under that bit there a little bit like we used to do the uh, uh used to do the uh, greenhouses on uh, old stream we would approach those from the side and pick up two at once uh we're gonna do the same here with these uh quite close together that is so we'll see how we do there and uh yeah we might go and deliver these and start afresh with the new one uh, I don't know how many litres we've got in here. Uh, 1,700. So it's 86% full between these two. Uh, that's not bad at all. I'm quite happy with that. I think we might go and uh, deliver these in a bit. So we'll leave these on the front of here. They're quite, wow, they're quite heavy for this little JCB. It's, uh, it's getting a little bit front heavy with this. So we'll just put this over here. We can load these into the back of our TLX or onto the back of the uh, Unimog in a bit. And then uh, with everything moved out of the way, yep, let's move ourselves out of the way and go into the construction screen. Let's bring this over here. Right, we're going to demolish this. Uh, yes, 12,641. That's brilliant. And let's try and place a new one. So sheep. I'm going to go for the 97,000. We could go for the 51,000, but it would only add 10 more sheep. And I want to add a lot more than that. 97,000 is going to move us along a lot quicker. It's actually slightly smaller than the other one, uh, quite amazingly. And if I position this right... We should be able to, oh yeah, keep the level a 
about right with the road which we had before. So about there-ish. Yeah, I want it to sort of bleed into the road a little bit. So sort of there. Looking at that back corner, though, we got a rock. I think we want to get rid of this rock in the back corner. I don't really want this in the sheep pasture. So let's let's go and do some rock destruction, which will be fantastic. We've not done that in a little while, and we do still have uh, the piece of kit to do it with. So let's pull that out of there, drop it off. Our skid steer is being really useful again today, and I like it when that happens. Right, grab that. And we are going to have to hook it on. I haven't done that yet, otherwise it won't work. So, put that up. And then we'll go and get rid of this. And, yeah, so I think it's going to end up doing a, another bit of landscaping. I think we're going to have to landscape around this a little bit. I've just seen a tree trunk as well. We'll turn this on and in there we go and we should be able to i can't remember how we, oh yeah we can get rid of these with the stump grinder so we'll bring the grinder over it'll take a little while but uh, that will clear that yeah there we go and um, because the stones aren't actually worth anything to us and then uh just before i go and do that grab this piece of wood and i've got a pile of it over this way i think yeah over here so this needs to be... Uh, we can never put that on with all the stuff from the, the tree farm. So we're going we're to be doing a lot of cutting of stuff from the tree farm in the future, I think. Right. And let's go put this back in the shed. Worth having this kicking around just to get rid of the odd stone that we have. Uh, it doesn't cost us a lot to have this piece of kit. It's a fairly uh, inexpensive lease. Um, and eventually we'll be able to just afford it. Right, disconnect our pipes, drop it off, and uh, we'll put this back out here because we're going to be wanting to deal with the wool in the near future as well. And so that can go back under. Okay, so back into our construction menu and... Oh no, I need to get rid of those. Let's uh, just pop over here. We have got a piece of kit to do that with, and that is this one. It's ridiculous how slow this piece of kit moves with this stump grinder on the front. Uh, it's just, yeah, a little bit mad. Oh, doing some very rough terrain here. Now, if I come over and... I'll be interested to see if the front one does it as well as the back, because the front one, of course, is our stump grinder, and the back is the land one, so the front doesn't do it does the back yeah the back does look at that that is just getting rid of all of that and i don't mind it changing the state of the ground um because we are going to be uh taking uh well we're going to be putting the the bit down here and it's going to change the state of the ground anyway i have a feeling this tree it's actually this tree at the back we'll get rid of that as well while we're here uh, because I think that is probably going to be... Yeah, that's just a huge dead piece of wood. So we'll get that out as well. And uh, that gives us a good area now to play around with this. And put our new sheep pen down. Okay, so time to place the, uh, place the sheep pasture. And I want to avoid making the same mistake as we made last time. We've got quite a drop down from the road here for where the sheep area is and while i want to place it in roughly the same place i want to make sure that we're on the same level as the road so let's take this and grab from the edge of the road here and see if we can just raise the land up a bit along here uh, like that and if we can do that, then we might be able to then place on this bit of land here. So uh, I want to enlarge this, uh, grab this, and just pull out along here. Don't mind it being raised up a bit around the whole thing. 
just uh if we raise this up here and prepare the land what we'll probably end up with is uh, an area that we can then sort out later so let's grab the sheep uh we're going for the ninety-seven thousand uh pound one and you can see the price is 97700 how much are we overlapping the road we're not which is good news uh we want to give ourselves enough space at the far side uh at this side in order to get in uh, to be able to unload sheep and I think that's going to raise quite a bit of land at the back of that but we'll see how it goes and place it okay i think that's looking fairly good yeah we're we're fairly flush with the road um we have good access at this end here um i think we could do with possibly raising it a little bit along there it's nice and flush at this end but it's it's a bit raised a bit there so i think we want to sort that i actually got a nice little uh oh i know what we could use this space for we can store all our bales in there so that's perfect and yeah we do need to smooth out the back of this because look at the back of this uh that is all a little bit mad so back into the construction menu here uh landscaping i want to uh come into here and we're gonna go a uh, larger smoothing tool and just smooth this out at the side here and then what i want to do at the back i think i don't know if it'll allow me to yeah it's sort of it's it's already placed the fencing at the back so uh they'll just have a big drop away i think there's not much i can do about that uh but we can smooth that out a little bit and it'll look not too bad and then we smooth this around here we actually need to oh we actually need that to be flatter so let's not do that let's bring this back to this level right like that okay and same out the back keep that up on a level like that um and then Set that as my point and bring that up that might actually do that a bit as well and then we can smooth all of that we might end up with some sheep possibly jumping the fence but uh i'm happy with it otherwise yeah and then just smooth that round there a little bit and i'm happier with that then I think we need to bring it up a little bit at this corner though so level and take it down and then just bring that up there yep there we go okay i think that is pretty good uh, i'm gonna go down a little bit there just to sort of sort that out and then smooth it just so that it nicely smoothed out and that i think is probably going to do the job uh let's smooth this a bit as well maybe just lift it a little bit along that edge there you can see it's doing it's lifting it but in a bit of an odd way right so then i'm going to smooth and that should get rid of those odd ridges that we just put in. Yeah, like that, and like that, and like that. There we go. I think that actually has done zipple. Never mind. Okay. So, we've got space over here for stuff to unload. It's still a little bit odd, and I think I might do a little bit of cleanup around there. We've got space actually to store extra stuff if we want. Uh, space to store our bales uh and over here is where we're going to drop our sheep off so let's get that done so fun of this trailer of course is that it's a dolly and i'm gonna have to pull it into here straighten it up and then try and reverse it straight back as much as i can i'm doing all right with this kind of thing as long as you, uh, yeah, as long as you keep things fairly straight, you're all right. 
and bring it into here and like that unfold the back so that we can unload our sheep and there we go so select them uh, maximum move yes okay and then select them and move them as well we will go and buy some more sheep in a moment uh, i think my trailer is closing up yep uh, so now what i want to do is give them some food and we will also check on the water situation i think this one does require water sometimes the big husbandries don't and they have plumbing uh but i think we probably need to give this one water we definitely need to put a load of grass in it so uh we'll use our pallet forks and put some grass into here like so it's not many liters but it's a start and we can go get one of our bales off of here as well as i think that tree is now in a little bit of a dip yeah i'm gonna have a play around off camera i think and put some extra and do a little bit of extra landscaping i don't want to spend too much because obviously it's costing us money to do it um but i think we could uh do with a little bit more landscaping four thousand five hundred liters of hay per bale wow that went right in there let's have a look at these sheep so um yeah we don't need to give them water this this has water this uh this one um we could put a couple more bales in though so i'll do that and um then we can start looking at getting some more sheep i think and just as I'm delivering the hay bales in there, and I think they're going in uh, 1,000, and yeah, so those will clear off in a bit. Um, we've got a great demand at the fire department. That is for wood chips for 934. That is way above. It's a brand new one. I am going to go and get that trailer full of wood chips we've got and get them straight down to the fire department. Suddenly, loading all these wood chips into this trailer a little while ago is not such a dumb idea. This is going to make us so much money and allow us to buy so many more sheep and, uh, and get us going again. Sometimes you miss a great demand and sometimes it comes back up and a new opportunity presents itself. After last couple of times and losing all of that and, and losing a lower great demand recently uh for us to have a full trailer of wood chips ready to go and take advantage of this one is amazing the wood chips were almost at best price anyway so uh this is the reason why this high demand is actually so well paying uh, because it, it's almost time for the highest price anyway i think the fire department is just up here is this it uh yes fire and rescue so we want to bring this in uh oh not this side what i'm gonna do then we've got a car behind us but you'll have to wait uh we'll have to oh, i was gonna reverse around the corner and go in um but that hasn't worked out so we'll reverse up here and then go forwards out the way and pull into the front of the fire department i thought i could access it from the back um however where i want to access it from is over here bring it in fire station six and we can tip these here let's just double check this 938 tag it it is right here this is exactly where we want to be tip it up and this is pay itself so well and we've made over forty-two thousand off that forty-five thousand and fifty-one off that that's amazing so uh yeah it did pay off and actually we still have some uh wood chips down at the sawmill so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the truck back up there 
Uh, we will load up a few more and get them down here and absolutely milk this. Um, because although best price for wood chips is next month, uh, 938 is too good an offer to miss uh, to pass up. There might even be another 10,000 liters of this here, I think. There's, oh wow, we are, oh, we're not too low on fuel. It's beeping at me, but we're okay. We can refuel this when we get it back to the yard. Uh, yeah, there's, there's possibly another uh, 10,000 liters here. Only has to be three buckets full to do that. And uh, currently we've, we've picked up one without too much hassle. We've got three bucket fulls in. How much is left here? Uh, that is another 600. Uh, there's a little bit in the center there. 619. And one last little patch just here. There we go. 635 liters. So we are about 300. Uh, we're 300 and 65 liters short of uh, another 10,000 liters but that's really good we're gonna make an absolute killing off of this yeah 9,635 liters so um about another 9,000 pounds we're gonna make off this so we want to turn into the fire department again oh, this is gonna be Oh, there's no easy way for me to get this truck to the fire department. Actually, there is. I could approach it from the other, other way and, uh, and not try and be uh, so... Uh, try and take just a huge shortcut. Let's tip that. Up it goes. I'm going to reverse up a little bit just so that we are absolutely in there. And... We still have, in fact, that is slightly larger, 946. And that's another 9,123 harvest income from the wood chips. I did not expect that the wood chips today were going to pay us back for most of what we've spent on that brand new sheep pen. Uh, that is absolutely brilliant. And it means that we can now go and get all the sheep we need now one thing i'm not certain of is whether we actually have an animal market on here i i'm not sure because of course when we bought our first set of sheep we didn't go and buy them from the market we just got them delivered so uh, i don't know if there is actually an animal market or not let's park this up here and uh, let's have a look on the map. Can I see an animal market symbol anywhere on here? No, I'm not sure there is actually an animal market on this map. Everything is floric factories, pet accessories. Uh, yeah, I don't think we've got an animal market on here. So uh, I think the trailer we've got is probably pointless. That's purchased stuff at the sawmill. Yeah, there is no animal market on here. That's fine what we'll do then is uh is we can return the animal trailer as we're not using it uh we only needed it in order to get uh the first set of uh animals or the first set of sheep so uh, we'll return that so that can go least items here animal transport return yes okay and then I'm going to add another 20 sheep, I think. Uh, let's add... Oh, wow. Another 20 sheep. We want to, we want to add the adults. Um, I think we're going to add uh, another 20 of the Landris. So that will then... Uh, that will over-double our, sh our production. In fact, we'll add 25. Uh, and we'll, tw we'll add 20 of these actually buy 20 of those okay and then another five of the uh black welsh mountains so we have uh 20 of the uh black and 20 of the white and that's a nice even setup on there then uh we have 280 yeah so they've got enough wool for a while 
and that's uh, all looking good and at 1641 it's actually getting fairly dark around here but then it is the middle of december so uh all i've really got to do for the rest of today is a bit of cleaning up uh i think we will probably try and deliver in fact what we will do is we'll do one more job today as the sun is setting let's go put this wool uh into our factory so we start producing some fabric and um, because it's going to take a little while for the fabric to be produced anyway and that way we can then get things moving and in fact look at that we already have some wool being output so uh yeah this is absolutely going to be worth it oh although that is not going to work that way around so let's take that out widen those a little bit bring this round pop our forks in this way and doing it this way we are not going to have to uh we don't have to switch out the back of the truck uh which is what i'm trying to avoid doing right now and we should still be able to fit all of these in the back here though yep just like that in and down and we'll get the first of our wool delivered to our spinnery and get things moving a little bit let's strap it all down and that right close it up and off to the spinnery we go wow the sun is really fading fast We've got a lot done today. I'm really pleased with our progress. We are getting into sorting the wool out and uh, and sorting everything out from there. Is this going to unload from the back of this? I'm hoping so. Otherwise, I've got to get stuff down there. Yeah, there we go. That is all unloaded. And we can start the spinnery off now working. Where is the key for this? There it is. Right around the back so let's uh oh let's turn all these off because we somebody to tell me off for this we've got all of these running that are costing us money and uh and shouldn't be we need to go and get some more metal next time now that our our, our stuff is empty uh we need to probably get some wood into there uh shingle we can deactivate as well uh and now we just need to activate the fabric wool and start outputting some of that um, because we have a fair amount of fabric to create to finish off our ship when we finish off our ship that will uh, that will bring us in quite a bit of cash we are going to be loading up or we have been loading up with iron ore we've got to get the, fa the metal factory our iron furnace running again so uh We've got just, I think, two more loads to put into our trailer. And then we'll be ready to head back down there. And then wood is at a premium today. If we have a quick look in here, uh, we can see that the price of wood is at 985. I think, looking at the price fluctuations, next month is the best price. Uh, yeah, so it's on its way up at the moment. It normally drops like a stone. In January and then rises in February so I want to get at least a trailer full if not two done today uh, what we'll probably try and do is get a trailer full done uh, and into our sawmill or possibly actually making uh, bowls and pepper pots because we don't need any other wood at the moment uh, until we know what we're gonna need in the new factories and things when we buy those uh, we're not too worried about that. 79 uh, litres worth left in the front of this. What I think I'm going to do is um, not overly safe, but we're mainly going on the back roads. We're going to put another 3,000 in the bucket of this. And then we're going to head down and, uh, and I think transport all of this down to our uh, iron furnace. Get this all delivered. And that way, we can get that running and get the money flowing from that again. So start up the engine. Put that on the follow for the Torion. And then, yeah, this is a little bit, uh, little bit front heavy. But 
uh, we should be able to make our way down the mountain and uh, back to the iron furnace and get that running again so that we make a really decent amount of money coming in we are at 50,000 so we're not too bad um, but uh, yeah we need to get more I can really feel the weight of this bucket of iron ore on this it is uh yeah it's not great it's uh it, it really really fights back uh this whole thing but we have made it and we can get this working again so extra three thousand meters in that can get out of the way then and uh and then the truck's gonna come in behind and we'll stop this here yeah, you're not going to be able to do that. So, uh, hide work off. Back you up. Get you to turn around on the circle. Now, it should actually hit sideways as much as it does if I revert it straight back up to it. So let's try this, seeing as we've got this turning area. And there we go. So, we can tip that there like so. And that then gets uh, gets that into here. And yeah, a whole load of money starts getting made from, uh, from our iron ore. Which I had previously disabled. So we'll activate that again. We are going to have about 51,000 litres in here, I think, uh, producing, which is great. Uh, I stopped the fabric production. Uh, we've got 860 litres in there at the moment. So we're waiting uh, to put more wool into our uh, fabric production. Uh, we have plenty of long planks actually still producing money there. So that's good. Um, those, uh, it does 36 per month. We might, we might have those going for a little bit longer on there. So that actually, we probably don't need to get the wood into there. So maybe what we actually need to do is load up the old sawmill with a whole load of wood. Uh, I think that would be fairly useful to us. So uh, let's get these two back down to our wood yard. And then from there, uh, we can start planning where to go next today. So there are a couple of things we need to do today. One is I think we want to go and get a bale spike. We have been using the uh, pallet fork to grab our bales, but we've got enough bale kicking around here now that I think that would be useful to grab ourselves a bale spike. Uh, and the other... I think we do need to get some wood cut. So uh, whatever I'm looking at, we're, we're looking at a fairly good set of wood. Uh, let's have a look, actually. I have a thought on selling wood. Now, it's supposed to be good next month. Current prices are not bad. We do have a great demand at the container warehouse, but it's nowhere near as good as uh, some of the other stuff. Elm Creek is actually the lowest price. Normally, uh, Elm Creek for pretty much everything else is the best price. It's the lowest price here. Best price we could get today is eight uh, nine eight five at the old sawmill. But the old sawmill we own, so that is no good. Uh, otherwise, we're looking at eight six four at the paper factory. Uh, no, eight seven six at the wood turner, which we also own. So yeah, uh, the the current sawmill that we can't own. That is 970. I, I don't think it's worth us selling plain straight up wood. Uh, I think we're better off processing it in something else to sell. So uh, I think that's going to be the way to go. First, I'm going to put all of these away. And, uh, and then we're going to take our TLX truck and the flatbed uh, little tow trailer down with, the, uh, with our little skid steer loader our teleskid down to the shop and go and grab ourselves something to pick up these bales with these hay bales and get them out of the way because so i think that is going to be the best use of our time uh today clear things up get things ready and move on back down to the shop and i've got the teleskid on the back 
let's uh, get everything unstrapped because it doesn't like it if I unfold it while it's strapped on. And then once we've lowered it down like this, we can jump into it and off the back. It's hard to bring this all the way down here just to grab a bale spike, which is a little bit mad. Uh, it's I would have driven the teleskid itself, but it's really, really slow to do it that way. Um, and actually just quicker to do it this way. So we'll get the paladin. Uh, we can need to go the red or the gray. I'm going to go the uh, the gray. Yeah, buy that. Okay. Not expensive. £600. We can afford that right now. And uh, yeah, now we can get the bales off the field really easily. And I don't feel like I'm being cheaty by using the, uh, by using the pallet fork on there. It just fits much better. So back this back onto the trailer. And then we're going to head back up to our logging camp. Uh, what I do want to quickly check while I'm down here is exactly what we are still needing for the roller coaster. I have a feeling that we, we, we got the shingles. So we got the roof tiles and did all of that. Uh, I have a feeling that uh, it is just the furniture factory we need at the moment. Uh, just strap all of that down. There's another one under there. And I think another one under there. There we go. And uh, yeah, before we head back, let's just skip over here. Most of the roller coaster itself is built. I think it is just... Yeah, chair, table. Ah, there we go. Chair, table, barrel, and bucket. So we need the barrel factory. We need the table, fac uh, the furniture factory. And I'm not 100% sure where we build a bucket. That might be the barrel factory. Uh, that might be uh, the furniture factory. Or that might be somewhere else. So uh, we'll see as we get those. I think we only have two more places to buy, though. So, um, yeah. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see in a bit where that is. For now, let's just get this back to the farm and get these bales cleared up. So that uh, if we want to fill up the shed a bit more with some more hay bales, we'll be able to in the near future. One thing we have kicking around the yards that I'm not sure if we even need anymore is the water trailer. And I don't know if that's leased or bought. Did I actually end up buying that or, or did I lease it? Let's uh, have a quick look in our shop here. And yeah, that's well, that's actually leased. We can return that because we have no use for that anymore. Uh, it only holds water, so return that. Yes, okay. Our, uh, currently, our sheep do not require any water it's part of uh, that shed is that it's all plumbed in so uh, as a result that is uh, not a problem for us anymore and we can uh, get rid of that daily or monthly cost that we've got let's fold up the back of this trailer and turn this off and uh, yeah time to go and get those hay bales and we've got a nice little storage space up the front here. One of the nice things about these bales is that because they're not very big uh, and don't waste quite so much, uh, we can easily get them on two of them on the front of here. And that just makes things so much simpler for getting them off this field. Uh, I think we only have three more left. We didn't get that many off the field in the first place, which is not horrible i mean that's uh that's fairly good for us anyway now the way i'm gonna stack these in here is to make uh the most space we will do them like that and i'm just gonna come in here i think i can get four across here yeah i can so uh yeah if we can get if we can get them in there like that uh we're gonna get more bales in there and that will, uh, not that that's going to make a huge amount of difference because we don't have a huge number of bales. But over time, I think we'll end up stacking more and more in here. Especially if we do regular cutting with this grass. It's uh, very much going to be a, um, 
a nice stack of bales we get at the moment we are uh well we've got not got many because we've already put three at least three or four in with our uh sheep and uh, we've got two sitting there currently being used so um yeah just five left off this field take it back there's two more on here that's six left off this field i would very much like to have fit uh four across here but there's not quite enough space uh i'm not worried about too many bales being here though we'll uh, we'll just put them in there like that a bit and maybe move them around just need to go and get these last two bales off here now and then we uh will have this clear and when springtime rolls around we can get another cut and uh, and get some more bales as long as we can keep the hay flowing uh we'll keep getting wool from our sheep and uh, in fact we'll also start increasing the number of sheep we've got um because some of our some of our sheep i think are getting uh, close to lambing i definitely could have stacked this better oh well we've got bales in here wait and oh almost on that pile properly let's uh just pick these up reseat them so up like that and round it into the corner down and out there we go that has got that done it looks like we've picked up a bit of wood another random bit of wood sort of hanging around go put this on our random wood pile over here that'll uh all be got rid of in a minute I saw, yeah, there we do. We have random bits of wood sort of hanging around around here. I'm just throwing onto this uh, onto this pile. Don't know where they're coming from. How much do we have here at the moment? Uh, 722 liters. So that is uh, building up nicely. Nearly halfway through that. Um, that should mean that we get a thousand liters a day. We need. Uh, roughly another 6,000 litres. So uh, we've got a way to go with that yet. Uh, now it being just gone 20 to 1. Uh, I think we want to get the tree cutter out. And uh, and start harvesting some more stuff from our tree farm. Yeah, let's get some more of these down. Now, of course, I said the tree harvester. But we don't have one of those yet. Uh, we've got to do this by hand. So, uh, 80 is going to be 170 that we want to cut this at. So, about there-ish. As close to the bottom as I can get it. And we'll keep on opening this up so that we can get into here. If we target right, wow, we should be able to keep this away from other trees. So there, again, 80, so 170, about there-ish. That should get it to fall right where I want to. And are you going to go? Look at that. Threading the needle. I am very happy with that. Uh... And 75 means 165 is the angle we want to cut this at. Now, we learned last time, or we did this, that we want about six trees, I think. So, uh, that is the first three. And we get three more. Oh, okay. That's not good. Uh, then, what I'm going to have to do is we're going to have to take this tree here, I think. Where we're jammed up against. Um, go that way with this. So, see if this will work. And see if it will drop the other tree. So, that's fallen clear. And the other one's fallen clear. Fantastic. And then I'm going to take two more over here. So we'll take this one uh, falling at that angle. 
So about there-ish. I think that's actually not quite where I wanted it. We may end up taking another tree. Ooh. Closer than I'd expected. And one more. We'll take this one. Oh, which is going to be fun to get at. No, I don't think I can get at that one. Uh, take this one, actually. And again, nice big space to put that through there. Cut that at that height. And then we can go into the tree harvester. Or the tree processor. And uh, get all these trees processed. I do love the simplicity of all this. It just makes things so much easier having all of this at the back of our area. Uh, where we can... Um, where we can just control all of it. Uh, right, we've got six meters, good. So cut, bring around and cut. I'm uh, gonna need to lift that a bit, I think. But yeah, just works so smoothly and so easily to be able to do this here and, uh, and just pick up big piles of wood without much fuss. And in fact, if I turn this, look at that. That is almost perfectly in line for the next one. Cut that. Oh, it was in line. Right. Turn you there. There we go. And cut. Yeah, these trees are nicely in position. Whoa. Okay, that's not coming out of there. Not easily anyway. So we'll have to pull that back and turn it a little bit. There we go. Right, I'm going to put that over there, clear of this first pile. Um, because if I don't, it's going to start knocking it over. And I want to avoid doing that. There is going to be a little bit on top of it, which isn't great. But we can sort it out. Right. And then turn this back. And we'll go get the next one. It does make things so much simpler doing it this way. It really does. But I'm going to go and grab this one next. Over here. And out and down. Cut. Round. Back it out. And hopefully not get caught on anything. As does happen sometimes. Yeah, there we are. We're clear. We might need to get this first pile, though, picked up. Because that is getting fairly big just on its own. So I ended up deciding to cut all the logs into one nice big pile over this way. And so I've got a good pile of them over there. The only one we've got left is this one in here. Which is going to be fun to get out. So spin this round. I think we need to spin the head round. That's going to have to go all the way around like that. And then uh, out. Can I get this from here? I'm not sure I can. Okay. So let's see if we can't maneuver this right. There's a big old rock in my way here. See, nope, not quite. Let's uh, maneuver ourselves around. Yeah, look at that, that big old rock in my way. Uh, bring that there. Drive forwards over the rock. I didn't plan for that rock to be a problem when I originally planted these. There we go. Grab that. And then we can just back out, hopefully. Oh over this this will go over most things this uh, Volvo and I've got to be careful because it's getting stuck on uh, on the trees over there so careful manoeuvring is what will get us out and over onto the pile like so and we're still having to do a certain amount of dragging, even though we've uh, got equipment to try and avoid that. But uh, I like this pile here. I want to shove it all on this pile 
so that we can just drive our wheel load into it pick up a whole load of logs and load them onto the trailer for easy access i mean that is a nice big pile of wood next up then we need to drop off the front bucket from this and take this round the other side we have got our big claw around there our um our logging grab and get that oh we're on to the next stack so we've got over a thousand liters today of uh of the wool if we're lucky we'll get a full pallet per day and we only need four full pallets to get all of the fabric we need Unfortunately, we did deliver a pallet and a bit. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've not got a full set there, but we can we can kind of judge how much we need. We only need, uh, I think it's about 200 litres worth. Nice thing about this big and nice big pile is that we can grab a nice big pile and put that on the trailer. What I do need to do, though, is go and get the trailer. The length of time we've had this TLX Phoenix on here now, I have added something to the game that I'm, uh, I am I kind of hope might come up for sale. Uh, and that is to upgrade this to a Winter Wolf at some point. I would absolutely love to do that. I think that is a cracking truck for this map and, uh, and would be a really nice addition. Alternatively, actually, we could go right. The Winter Wolf is what we need for our logging truck. And uh, and this is our road truck. And use this for uh, the low loader and possibly going and picking up the uh, the wood. Uh, sorry, the wood, the iron ore. Uh, I think that would work absolutely brilliantly for us to have two trucks on here. We're getting to that point on here now. Right, let's get this very large pile in here. Uh, I get told off for doing this But dropping them on there like that also that was not effective because look at those two on the end Those are not on their property at all Oh, yeah, the truck driver would hate me. Thankfully. There's no one in the truck at the moment But yeah, no truck driver would like me doing what I've been uh, just did then Right, we can get this placed a little bit better on here. So, like so. Yeah, and open it up. And then it's just the other one. The other one at the back that didn't get put on there properly. Don't want that sticking down by that wheel. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah, can't get the... Oh, there we go. That's got it. And actually sorted everything else out at the same time that's much better i'm happy with that and that is just our first lot of wood that's really good uh let's pull that yeah see if we can smooth that out a little bit push those into a good position and then yeah we can go and grab a second lot i always seem to end up working in small areas of maps so you know end up having like five fields and working those or in this case you know i'm working a a single smallish area uh where i have got everything set up and uh, and got myself into a position where i'm fully sustained by it uh, wow I'm moving that entire pile so uh yeah this is uh it tends to be one of those things i do is uh is get really well set up in one area and then don't tend to move too far from it uh this is a perfect example of that we have more trees than we are ever going to need in this tree farm we have no reason to uh to move out to another section of this map at the moment um simply because we don't need to we can cut and farm and do these to our heart's content and uh and we will continue to make money and we've got trees over there we've got trees there we've got trees the other side of the river uh we just have all the trees that we could want 
Now, can I get some more of these without pushing this pile over? My biggest problem is there are some long ones that are no good for what I'm doing here. They're sort of getting stuck on the end. Yeah. That is going to cause me problems. Can I knock those out? Yeah, there we go. Uh, sort of. Okay. Managed to do it without losing everything. We'll have to clear those out in a minute. And to be perfectly honest, this, even now, is a little bit messy. Will they, uh, can we push these in? We get them at the right height? No. I think we're going to have to reposition stuff once we've got it. So, that in there. And do that. Get those on there. And then we might need to try and get a couple of those pushed over. Let's see if we can't get the top of this. So this is uh, then using bits of your equipment as they were not originally intended. And I don't think that's going to work. I think I'm going to have to actually try and lift them off there. So that's just those two there. Bring it in. Get underneath like that. That's got one of them. Whoa. Let's not send the truck over. There we go. That's two of them. Just those two, please. There's one. Okay. Can I drag that off? Yeah, there we go. Not easily accessible, but it's at least off there. And then we've got to try and grab the second one. Finesse work, getting stuff off a trailer. There we are. Sort of under it. This is where I'm spending all my time on the day when I should be getting things loaded up, mucking around with this. I think I'm going to muck around with this for a little bit longer and, uh, and see if we can't get that sorted. And yeah, then we'll get the rest on here. It's being a little bit of trouble and uh, I've not got an easy way to fix it. A little bit of fiddling around and I got it sorted and kind of want to get these bits on the top if I can we got space and we can clean this up okay there we are oh. sometimes it doesn't quite grip them as well as you would have liked and as a result it drops them on the way as you're driving we got it though Pick them up again, rip it properly this time, and then get it onto the trailer. And then I think we're going to have to move the trailer forward because otherwise uh, we're just going to have stuff fall off. Oh, wow. Sometimes things go your way and sometimes they don't. This, actually, I'm not too unhappy with. I've had worse load-ups on here. And we can now load up the back as well. I'm going to try and push the last few of these into something approaching a more coherent pile. Unfortunately, I don't think this is the thing to do it with. I think the thing to do it with is sitting right beside. I jump in this, and it's slightly in the way anyway. What I can do is just spin this around and push these a little bit this way on the ends. Hopefully that means, I was going to say hopefully that means everything sort of lines up, but uh, not quite. Sometimes things go really well and sometimes things go... Uh, a little bit janky and we certainly seem to be on the jankier side at the moment so uh, we'll be a little bit janky ourselves push these into here and everything to line up a little bit better there we go that will be better this I think I can pick up and put on top right 
So now, as long as I don't mess this up, which is famous last words, we should be able to get a nice pile of these together and load it up without too much fuss. Are we nicely in the middle? Sort of. Will this go onto our trailer without any problems? I don't know. Let's find out. Bring it around the corner. Up over the top. <laughs> no, we dropped one. But the rest will go in here and nicely in the gap as well. Which is exactly what we want. And then I can just grab this one that I've dropped. Pick it up. And put that on as well. Yeah, we kind of need to load between these posts in order to, to load properly. Uh, it's the easiest place to do it. But uh, if you don't get stuff in the middle, then it doesn't go in there right. Tried to pick it up in the middle and picked it up in the middle of the bottom one. Which means everything's heading towards the back of the trailer. As I said, it gets a little bit janky sometimes. So open that up. At least at the back of the trailer we can push them on. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So we'll get those pushed on at the back. We'll sort that all out a little bit. And I have just these ones left to do. Six tree, six tree seems to be fairly good. I think you could do seven, maybe eight to top things off. Um, certainly seven of these trees would seem to fit on here fairly well uh, uh, Eight eight I think is going to be a push eight you're definitely going to need to extend the, uh, the poles for and uh, Yeah, we're actually getting to the point where we need some lights on here so Open that up and drop that off and Yeah, I think we'll take these down to the sawmill and get it all processed that way we know that next day we're going to have a load of stuff that we can get sold. So, uh, yeah, let's get the lights on on our truck and head down to our sawmill. Down to the sawmill and we just need to back it into here. Oh, let this van go past. And bring it round. And looking in the mirror. Yep, straight down into there. This is gonna be a nice load of wood and a nice little income. We always get a nice little income from this. Right, undo all our straps. And away that unloads. Now, one more thing I want to check before we finish today is just pop over here and see if we actually have any fabric output yet. We don't. So we got 860 liters of fabric in here none output yet we are almost a quarter of the way there i reckon we're gonna have some more to put in here next time which will be fantastic that will get us halfway towards our ship being finished um which is our next thing we want uh we are unloading all of the wood from here and what we want to do with that wood is turn it into ease so that we can sell them and make some money and possibly turn some of them into furniture uh, in a bit. Um, but yeah, we are moving forward once again. For now, though, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.